Wait, okay, hang on. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Daily Doge, welcome. But, uh, what? <laughs> Give me just a second, I'll uh, address that question in just a bit. Uh, let me just send out a tweet that I'm going live. has been on your mind the whole day. I mean, I'm sorry that to have taken so long to start streaming this so that you had to be riddled this entire day without going by without knowing the answer to which chipmunk gets the well, gets the best head or gives the best head. That's so in other words, who who gets the most? In other words, not uh, who gives it the best. I, I read it uh, who gives, but uh, that's a whole different story. If we're talking about who gets the best head, I I, I know for a fact who that is gonna be. But give me just a second then. And I will answer your question. But, uh, let, wait a minute. I first need to find out what are the names of all of the chipmunks again? Uh... Okay, well, hang on. First off, you, to, to be fair, I'm going to assume that you are referring to, um, you know, the three chipmunks from Alvin and the chipmunks, right? But, because you didn't necessarily specify which, you just said which chipmunk. You didn't say any, like, specific chipmunk. So, let me have a look and see here. And uh, let's move over onto the screen. Okay, so here are all of the cartoon chipmunk characters. And of course, the first ones that appear are all from Alvin and the Chipmunks, right? So you have uh, Alvin. Who else is there? Alvin, Simon, and Theodore. I'm pretty sure Simon is the blue one and Theodore is the fat one. However, let's not forget, there could be many more chipmunks. Like, I think there's Chip and Dale. These are not chipmunks. These are... None of these people are chipmunks. These are all humans. But... Since you, spe you specified gets the best head, so I am going to... I'm pretty confident in saying that Elvin is the one that gets it. I mean, it's... He is the chipmunk. It's Elvin and the chipmunk. So he he's like the main guy. And then you have the other two. So Elvin is for sure... He's the one that gets it. But weren't there like the female chipmunks, like uh, the chipettes or something? The chipettes, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, hmm. yeah, none of them were called Frank, unfortunately. So they were, they were Brittany, Jeanette, and Eleanor. Uh, I, oh, I do not want to. We're getting into dangerous territory. First it was the Pokemon rating yesterday, and now it's chipmunks. I, you know what? I'm not gonna go deeper past the chipmunks. I think... I think that's where we call it after just looking at Elvin and the chipmunks and... Classifying Elvin to be the one that has the most game and gets the most head. Can't believe I'm even saying that. But, uh... <laughs> Hello, Ray. And, uh, welcome. You, uh, you came at a very weird time. Don't, don't, want, don't... Don't, uh... Be curious about why we're looking at Alvin Chipmunks. Because instead, of course, today is Wednesday. It is Wednesday, right? Yes, it is Wednesday. And that, of course, means that it is Waifu Wednesday. And, uh, unfortunately, this is not going to be the waifu that we are going to be building today. In fact, there's a bit of a story behind this one. I think it was yesterday. I saw that... Was it, uh... I 
can't remember who posted it, but on my Twitter timeline, I saw everybody was talking about a new season of Tokyo Mew Mew was announced. Tokyo Mew Mew, also known as uh, Mew, Mew, Mew Mew Power, if you watched like the, the four kids or the uh, English version of it. And man, that, that hit me with a wave of nostalgia. Because I'm pretty sure this was, um, I think this was my first anime that I had ever watched. That I, like, that I knew was like, oh, this is anime. So, in order to show some spirit, uh, I have two jigsaw puzzles lined up. The first one is going to be uh, this one here, which is of the OG, the classics, the OG Mew Mew Power cast. And it looks familiar? I would hope so. It's, a, it's an age-old classic. And oh, the music is a bit loud, yeah. Pokemon music does go hot, but... Make it a bit softer, yeah. And, uh, like I said, this was the first anime that I ever watched, and... It, like, this awakened me to, to put it in, a uh, lack of better terms. So, let's first go ahead and set up the board. Uh, how many pieces are we gonna use? Let's go with a classy little, uh... uh 340. And then let's go ahead and make this multiplayer. Uh, but also welcome, of course, Ray and Kokoro Kyoto. Unfortunately, your first anime was Omomari Himari. You'll probably not search it up on stream. Uh, I, I'm gonna take your advice, Deddy Doge, and not <laughs> search it up in front of everybody else to see. Because, uh, you know, when you say anime, it could mean... That can cover a broad amount of things. It could be, you know, regular safe for work anime, or it could be something a little... A uh, bit more stringent, to put it like that. And also to answer your question, by the way, Daily Doge, uh, my favorite dinosaur, bringing it back to another, like, cartoons and then, uh, would probably be, what was it, Little Stegosaurus, because there was an anime called, I think, not really anime, it was a cartoon called Dino King, and the main character was a, a little Stegosaurus. But let me send it. So, that, of course, if you want to help out in building this puzzle, this is the link in chat, and let me also update it for in case anybody else comes in later on. Uh, your first anime that uh, Kokoro watched was either Pokemon. Oh yeah, Pokemon I think is also a good one. Or Bakugan. Oh my goodness, Bakugan! What a what a throwback. That was one of the. I feel like that was one of the things that didn't really take off. That uh, compared to things like Pokemon or you know all the other children's toy games like Beyblade or uh, Digimon and stuff like that. I mean, I there were some kids at my school that had Bakugan, the little ball things that you would throw around. Uh, Some of you would like Bakugan brawl, Bakugan stand, and you throw it on top of the, like the the metal cards and everything. And Ray, your first was Naruto. Oh my goodness! Uh, I mean, I think a lot of people's may have been like you know the the big three: Naruto, Dragon Ball Z, uh, One Piece, maybe Bleach or something like that. But I, I think for me at least, why I say this Tokyo Mimi was my first is because I knew like definitively. This was not like the other cartoon shows, like, this- this wasn't like Spongebob, hang on, wait a minute, wait a minute. This isn't like my, uh, what- what other- Danny Phantom? Why are these girls so cute? Hmm, the Japanese have a way with animation that is different. And it like, uh, something clicked in me. <laughs> and they little oh, your, your favorite dinosaur is probably the one with a thousand teeth, which one is that? You try to watch Bakugan as an adult, but you couldn't get past the first episode, it was so cringe. I mean... I think that's why, you know, everything is always nicer when you're a kid, because what we what we adults see as cringe, children probably think as super cool. Like, oh man, look at the, the cool little ball rolling out onto a metal cord, and then it like pops out. And all that nonsense. And then you have all like the, the tuny like anime attacks and whatnot. And stuff like that. Ah, you wanna help with your mobile? Oh no worries, Ray. You can always just sit back and relax then. I should also not search that up on screen. Wait, search uh but the, the dinosaur with a thousand teeth. Is it because it's that scary or something? I remember it gonna getting good late on, but it was just so hard to watch. I think... I don't even remember how many uh, episodes of it watched, but I remember one time for Christmas, I got a DVD of the first season or so. So like the first 12 episodes of Bakugan. And I mean, I watched that a lot, but I don't think I... Uh, I wasn't really aching to find out what happened in the next season, so... Uh, that is the only one and single DVD from that entire collection that I have. 
It was more the voice acting at the where the three gold characters acted was the male. Ah, I see. I, did you watch the the English or the Japanese version though? That's a question. So turn up on your phone something. The name is pretty cool. Oh, well, let me have a look and see what this dinosaur with a thousand teeth is called. I don't want to get into too much detail about the whole. Oh, sub versus dub. Yeah. To be fair, when I was a kid, I, I'll admit, I watched Tokyo Mew Mew as, uh, well, I guess, technically speaking, Mew 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 Power, because it was English. But, uh, I watched it in English, because, of course, I was a kid. I didn't have the facilities to be able to watch stuff in Japanese. And, uh, oh my god, Ray, the German, German Naruto, I think everybody knows about the German Naruto opening, right? Uh, if you don't, let me, let me quickly play it. It is an absolute treat. Uh... German Naruto. Wait, Ray, did you did you have to watch Naruto in, in German? That makes me wonder now. Then, oh, you I don't know, poor thing or you joyous thing. Twelve years ago, a nine-tailed fox suddenly appeared. But loud enough. If you believe it. Naruto. Naruto. Oh. This, I don't know if you if this made it worse for you or better for you. Here we stand. Naruto, I'm on my wing. Naruto, I'll be your king. Getting ready to fight on sight. Got my best friends by my side. Sasuke You're a music producer and this is killing you. What do you mean? Is it is it killing you because you will never achieve the greatness that is the German Naruto opening? Like, you will never be able to reach a magnum opus as great, as brilliant as uh, the German Naruto opening. Oh, goodness. Let me turn this back down and play the mu Pokemon music again. <laughs> uh, and you, oh, you did have to watch it in Germany? Oh, my goodness. You saw this on TV? Oh, well, I mean, I know... I think here in South Africa, there was a time when Naruto was also aired on TV. And because, obviously, the, the opening song would be in Japanese, I don't think that they had a, an English version of the opening. And they definitely didn't play the German version. So what they did was they just completely skipped the opening and ending credits whenever the episode would air. It's it's like you're watching a, uh, the anime online and you skip the opening and ending because I think they didn't want people to see German or whatever or German uh, Japanese songs randomly on TV. Uh, which I don't even know what they, like I don't know if they just like put ads in instead. To make up for the, to make up for like the gap or whatnot. But yeah, I know though for like obviously, Mimi Power they had an English opening. Like there was, I know part of the the song. It's like, I know they, there was going la 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 la, and there was also the jingle when they had uh, an ad break and stuff like that. And something about it's up to me and you or something like that. I can't remember now. I know I know I remember the opening, but I just cannot remember any of the lyrics. That is a welcome, Red Robotic Man. It is Bongo Cat time, but more importantly, it's waifu time. The custom jigsaw puzzle failed. Uh subject failed to load. Ensure the image link used to create this puzzle. Huh? Is this the correct? Hang on. Where is how do I get the uh not that? Whoops. I get the link again. Let me just double check that I make sure the link does work. Otherwise, I will recreate it if you guys can't join. Oh, wait a minute. Hang on. Did I, did I not properly update the thing? Let's see. Uh, in that case, let me then just recreate it. That's right. The link has it. Your name. Ah. Oh. Hmm. That's weird. In that case, let me do, do, do. let me just recreate it anyway then, and we'll see what happens. Or in that case, we can try out the other one that I had prepared. Out with the old and in with the new. I did have a backup puzzle ready. I wanted to do this after the first one, considering this is the uh, the new lineup, the new girls, which ah, 
I don't know. When I first heard that there was going to be a remake, I thought it was going to be, you know, the same five girls. But I guess this is the next generation of the, the girls. Uh, so once again, we'll pay it up to 338 pieces. And hopefully this time, this should work. What mic do I use, by the way? I use a... What is it? A Samson Q2U. And here is the link. Let's hope that this works this time. But then chat analysts update the command. But uh, it's a it's a nice mic, I mean. I like it. It was nice and cheap compared to like some of the more expensive options. And uh, I think it does the job. Does the job pretty well. There we go. Hopefully this link works now. Anyway, they do look cute, Red Robotic Man. Uh, I will say I'm a fan of the purple head one, mainly because of, well, I mean, just look at her, right? I'm pretty sure she's going to be a lot of people's favorites. Uh, so let's see. Let's start off with the outside edges first. I remember, though, I would, uh, when I watched the original one, my favorite was the blue head girl. Well, not, not this blue head girl, but the, the blue head girl from, you know, older version. Because she had the, the one with the castanets. I think they actually kind of kept the, the looks pretty similar, because she also still has... The blue little balls of hair, I guess. And uh, yes, it's absolutely because of the hair, Kokoro. The hair. Mmm. Nice, long, flowing, luscious hair. And she also... Is that a... Tail? Does that make her a furry? Oh no. Don't tell me I... Don't tell me I like the furry one. Oh, to be fair, hang on. The orange one also has a tail. The monkey tail. Mmm. Long hair is nice, but the yellow one looks delightfully cheerful. I mean, yeah. She looks very happy. But I remember, I I don't remember why I liked the blue, the blue girl from the original version. I think maybe she she had the uh, she had like that kudere archetype, where she wasn't like super cheerful and stuff like that. She was like kind of shy, kind of timid, which was very nice. Or at least to me back then. <laughs> uh, hopefully though, by the way, this link works now. If not, let me know and I'll try and see if I can recreate it again. Because I can see everybody's like trying to join but disconnecting almost immediately. Uh, if that is the issue, I will try and remake the thing entirely. See if that might help out. But I remember, like I said, I was a very young child when I watched this first. And I still remember... Uh, it still doesn't work? Okay, well, hang on. Let's have a look and see if I can recreate the puzzle lobby. I still remember... This was on... This aired on TV, of course. And, like, I didn't have the, the, the pleasure and the joy to be able to download a uh, series and then watch it in my own time and binge it in my own time and stuff like that, right? And I also didn't have like decent- I still had dial-up internet when this was airing. So I couldn't exactly stream it either. So I had to make sure that when it was like whatever time it was, like 3 o'clock or 2.30, I would be there ready to watch it as soon as the episode started. And you know, set an alarm or something or just remember when it started. And there was one day- I will never forget this. There was one day where I didn't make it. There was a day where I missed an episode. Uh, and I, because like, I think I lost track of time at school or something, or my mom was running late to pick me up from school. And so because of that, obviously, I got home a little bit later, like, by the time the episode had already finished. And I remember the fact that I had missed the episode of Mew Mew Power, I legitimately cried. <laughs> I was so sad, and like, I was crying to my mom, telling her, like, why did you take so long? Because you took so long, we I missed the episode of Tokyo Mew Mew. <laughs> uh, not my finest moment. To be fair though, I was a literal child. So give me a break. I could have been crying about worse things, to be fair. Uh, let's see. I have another one set up here. Hopefully third time will be the charm. I will create a new game link. And ideally, I've joined the game. 
I'll copy the link, I'll paste it in here, and I'll also update the command. Now, in theory, this should hopefully work. Because Lord knows, or experience has told me that I am horrible at building these jigsaws by myself. I, I legitimately need the help. Because, I, if I'm not mistaken, like, when you had a, uh, I think the biggest puzzle we've ever done is a 600 piece puzzle. And even then, that took me, like, <sighs> hours. And there we go, it does work. Ah, finally, it does work. And of course, this is going to be a different one. But it is still, of course, the OG Mew Mew Power Girls. And they, you see, I don't know, just that, look at that smile of the girl with the blue hair. And I, I still remember her episode of how she, like, became, um... One of the, the girls. I think it was something to do with she was at a pool or something? Oh no. She was at a dance hall or something like that. If I remember correctly. And there was, I think the she fought like a panther girl, I think? And that was like the... Because remember, if I remember correctly, the girls go around and these little like demon souls or whatever possess people and then it turns them into these crazy monsters. And... There was a ball or like a dance or somewhere at some point in this big mansion. And the host of the ball was the one that was like targeted by this demon thing. And then when she was absorbed or when the when this lady absorbed that demon thing, she turned into this panther with like a whip and everything. And so it was up to the main girl, the pink one with the, the heart bell thing, and the the girl with blue hair. And I think it was up to them to take her out. And if I'm not mistaken, her weapon of choice was the castanets, the little, like, the two clamshells that you clap together, like... I think that was also one of the reasons why I liked her. Her, uh, weapon, to put in words. And I think, now that I look at it now, even though those five new girls... I, I'm assuming those five girls in the new reboot are all different, I think. But right now, they kind of look... really similar. Like, I mean, looking at the, the purple-haired girl again, she has the same, uh defining feature, I'll say, that is different from the other girls. So maybe it is actually all the same girls. But I remember in the trailer, it looked as if it was a completely different thing. Like, you still had the two same main guys. Actually, let me have a, let me have a look and see. Let me have a quick Google search. Uh, Toka Mimu new season. Is it a, is it a reboot or... Tokyo Mimu, what we know so far. Uh, let's have a look at the, the comic book, of course. Our trusted source of news. Tokyo Mimu might not have been the longest running series in the early 2000s, but its legacy shines even so. The shoujo remains one of the biggest magical girls series out there, and many felt it was a matter of time before someone rebooted the IP. Oh, so it's a reboot. Oh, so it, it's actually the same set of goals then. That came true last year when reports confirmed Tokyo Mew Mew knew was in the works, and the revival's first trailer has gone live. As you can see below, the new trailer gives fans a good look at Tokyo Mew Mew New, and it, as it is as pretty as ever. Some familiar faces can be found throughout the promo, and its music is pretty much perfect. The song Cat Sh Oh, I thought they said Cat Shite, but it's Cat Shite Supergirls by Smoothie is used to hype the clip, and the promo ends with a premiere update. It turns out Tokyo Mew Mew New will begin screening this July. We are also given a slew of casting announcements, including Yuma Uchiha as Masuya Aoyama, Yuichi Nakamura as Ryo Shiragane, Yusuke Shirai as Keichiro as Akasaka, and Kaori Ish Ishihara as Masha. These stars will join the main cast, including Yuki Tenma, Mirai Hinato, Ryoko Juni, Rian Tora, and Momoka Ishii. For those unfamiliar, uh, blah 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 blah. So it, I think it is just all the same characters then. Okay, that's a bit reassuring actually then. Uh, alright. Back to the puzzle, though. That's interesting, then. So, I'm guessing... I'm... Uh, maybe with age, I have come to realize that the purple-haired girl is more my type than the blue-haired girl. Uh, the outfit design might have a big reason for that as well, I will admit. I will say, I'm thankful that this puzzle now... Because, I mean, I'm referring to him as well, I can't remember the names. As pink girl, blue girl, purple girl, and all that stuff. The fact that they are all very distinct colors makes this, or it should make this puzzle 
a lot easier to build compared to some previous ones where they were all wearing like the similar outfits and stuff like that. Uh, let's see that. But I'm glad I could finally have another... It's been a while actually since we did the last puzzle stream. So I'm glad I could finally start one up again. I think the main reason why, as of late, streams have been sort of all over the place for myself is because, of course, my studies, unfortunately. Uh, the work and stuff like that. Thankfully, though, I was able to, like, I have, technically speaking, I do have an assignment right now for a programming module, but because I'm such a, such a good hacker and such a good programmer, uh, I finished that already. What I mean by that is, of course, I shoddily put up a bunch of code that may or may not work, but it runs at least, so I submitted that and I'm praying that it actually will work. <laughs> and this one feels- yeah, that's what I'm saying, like, the, the, the distinct colors, I would assume, makes it a little bit easier, and they're taking up a lot of foreground space, so, like, the hardest part would be- well, not really any part here. A lot of the times we have puzzles where there's one character in the main foreground that takes up, like, half the image, and then the rest of it is all blank space, where it's all the similar colors. But here, it should be very nice. Uh, but yeah, speaking of that assignment, though, it is a... <laughs> what a world of interesting things that you see in, uh, students. I've forgotten how crazy it can be, because obviously now I am doing a master's course, and you would think, you know, when you hear somebody doing his master's, you would think, oh, wow, um, everybody's, like, Everybody, like, they must be really smart, you know, to not only graduate to undergraduate, but now they're doing masters. They, oh, they must be, like, the cream of the crop, the creme de la creme and whatnot. Uh, yeah, no. It, that, doesn't, that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> Isn't that just how assignments work? Oh, submitting and praying? Uh, you're not wrong, Redobotic Man. Uh, but, like I said, this first module that I'm doing is a programming module, which I'm not, I'm not that great at programming. And... As it turns out, a lot of the other people that are also taking the module are also not that great. I think that for a lot of people, it's also their first time ever interacting with like any programming stuff whatsoever. So seeing, of course, as always, the class made a, a group, a WhatsApp group to sort of like coordinate and ask for help and help each other out, you know? Uh, to band together and tackle the solutions as a group. Obviously, while still doing our own work, you know, we're not just giving away answers and whatnot. But, I am in that group, with like the other 70 or so people, and I have not said anything in that group yet. I, I'm just silently lurking, I'm just, I'm just taking a step back and watching from afar. Because, the questions that are being asked in that group are some of the most... Like, I, I fail to believe how some of them are gonna manage. In fact, I know for a fact some of them are not managing with this assignment and stuff like that. And, uh... Again, you would think because this is like master's degree, you know, everybody is going to be a lot more mature. You know, everybody's going to know what they're doing. And, uh, in fact, no. It is just like undergraduate where you have people complaining about like the most simplest of tasks and begging, saying, Can somebody please ask for an extension? I just, I just, I'm having so much trouble. Just please, like, maybe if we had two more days to help uh, figure stuff out. Like, yeah, listen, if you couldn't figure out in like the... The two weeks that we've had, I don't know if having an extra two days will help you out. But uh, you do you. So that is going to be very interesting to though, to see uh, what's going to, like, to just sit back and watch as the group devolves into more and more begging for answers. I remember I made the mistake in uh, undergraduate, where I would actually help people out in a big group chat. And also, because it was undergraduate, there were many, many more people in the group chats because there were, you know, so many more students. And me outing myself as a guy that knows the answer to a question, or anybody really, it would be the worst possible thing you could do. Because you would just essentially put a signal, put a beam light on yourself saying, hey, I know the answer, I know how to do the solution. Because then, obviously, people will know, like, people will have the courtesy to know, like, hey, don't ask don't, don't obviously, in the group chat in front of everybody else, say, Hey, can you please give me your answer? What they'll do, 
is they'll privately message you and say, hey, I see you said you know how to do this in the group chat. Do you mind uh, telling me what you did? Or do you mind you know, just do you mind sharing with me your, your answer to see like where I'm going wrong and stuff like that? The problem is every single person thinks the exact same thing and does the exact same thing. So then you get bombarded with like 10 different people all at once saying, hey, I see you said you know the answer. Oh, that's interesting. I'm having some trouble myself. Would you, uh, would you mind helping me out? So after that, I learned. Shut the hell up, <laughs> basically. Uh, it doesn't ha I mean... Yeah, being nice is cool and all, but... Does it come... Do you want to pay the price for being nice? The worst was when, uh... I think when I got to third year? Yes, once, it was, once I was in my third year. Uh, because this is now like the big leagues, or like you've now made it past the halfway point of your undergraduate career. And whatever and stuff like that. They would now have um, like award ceremonies at the end of the year, where they would like give awards for obviously like some of the the, the latest stuff, you know. Oh, the best thesis and the best, uh, you know, the, the the best achiever and whatnot. And they also had for each year group, so like second year, third year, and stuff like that, the best student. So you know, whoever had the highest average. And unfortunately for me, in uh, my second and third years. I was the top student. Uh, you might be wondering, oh, wh why do you say unfortunately? Surely being top student is great and everything, you know? Like, you're, you know, you're super smart. Surely you should be proud of that achievement? I mean, yeah, it was cool and all, but... That essentially put a mark on me. <laughs> for lack of better terms. Now, whenever I would be sitting in a class, and bear in mind, again, uh, this is also pre-COVID, so obviously classes were very packed, and like, a class would have uh, a venue of like 100 or so students in it. It's not, University is obviously not like high school at all. It's not a small, tight-knit class of 30 people. It's a big-ass venue of 100 people where you probably don't even know 90% of them. You maybe know the one or two friends that you go and sit next to, and that's about it. At least if you're me. If you're antisocial like me. Maybe there are some people that actually speak to their classmates, but I was not that type of person. I would go, I would sit down with my like three, four group of friends, and we would silently sit there, not interact with anybody else in the class. But now... After it was like revealed that I was the top student, suddenly everybody in the class was my best friend saying, Oh, Danaha, how's it going, dude? Oh, you know, how was your weekend? Ah, oh, I hope it was great, eh? Anyway, so that's uh, that question three, huh? Quite a tough one. You figured it out yet? And uh, boy, oh boy. I mean, I saved face. I was like, Oh, yeah, I played along. Oh, and, uh, yeah, I think I realized. The solution was always, I would just feign ignorance. I, if they came up to me and said, Hey, have you, have you, uh, you know, have you figured out question three yet? I would always just say, Oh, no. You know, it's, uh, that's a real tough one, eh? Don't worry, I... It, it, I understand you struggling, because I'm also struggling. Don't worry about it. You know, it's, a, it's a quite a tough one. When in reality, I probably finished all of the work already. And I would just quietly say, Oh, you know, ooh, maybe later. I mean, check back in like a couple hours. Maybe then I'll figure it out. And then I sit and carry on doing nothing. And yeah, you communication, exactly. Nobody likes speaking to other random people. Ew, yucky, gross. Uh, let's see. To be fair, I think so, <laughs> my friends, though, would always be mad. Because I would, obviously, I wouldn't mind helping out my friends, because, you know, they are my friends. But they would always get mad at me for not trying to like fight back or not like shitting on other people that like keep on asking me for answers. They're always like, oh, why are you so nice to them? Like, just tell them to push off. I'm like, ah, I don't want to be that guy. It, the, the, it came to a head though. The most egregious, egregious form of like trying to get answers was in my third year. Uh, I remember this vividly because my friend never lets me down for it. One friend, oh, no, not one friend, one guy in the class who everybody knows of as a knobhead, for lack of better terms. Like, he was like, uh, I don't want to call him a Chad, because he wasn't. But he was that guy that's like, he talked more than anything else. He wouldn't do any work. He would always just talk his way out of every single situation possible. He came up to me one day, and um, for our work, you know, we would always have to hand in a uh, a worksheet of like the questions that we have done. 
And so one day, he came up to me and he's like, Hey, listen, can I borrow your, um... Can I, like, I'm really gonna have some trouble. Do you mind if I, like, take your... Oh, no, sorry. I had already handed mine in. I had handed, my, handed in my script of, like, all of my answers for that worksheet in the front of the class. And he came up to me and he said, Hey, do you mind if I, like, borrow your thing so I can have a look and see how you did this question? And I said, you know what? Sure, go for it. I handed it in the front already. You can just go and grab it there. So he's like, oh, cool, thanks. So he went to the front and he grabbed my answer script to fill it in. Oh, to, like, you know, I assume copy for his stuff. And then he's like, don't worry, I'll hand, like, once I'm done, I'll put it back where I found it. Like, you know, put it back in the, the hand-in pile. And um, a week goes by. So the following week, we go back to the class and, you know, you get your results back. So you get your sheet back and it should be marked and everything. And I go to the front and I'm looking now and it's all sorted al al alphabetically. So I know exactly where mine should be. It's like in the S pile for, you know, Shanaha. I'm digging through them all and I'm thinking, I'm like, hmm, where's, uh, where is mine? I go to my friend, I'm like, yo, did, did you, did you get mine for me or something? Did you like take mine for me already? And he's like, oh no, uh, why is yours not there? So I'm like, hmm, that's interesting. And then lo and behold, that same guy from last week, he comes up to me with his bag and he's like, oh dude, uh, listen, thanks by the way last week for helping me out. Uh, by the way, I'm sorry. And then from his bag, he pulls out my answer script. And I'm like, oh, did he get my script for me already? He's like, yeah, uh, when I handed mine in, I, I completely forgot that I still had yours. I'm like, oh, cool. Uh huh, and he's like, oh no, no, no I'll, I'll sort this out. Like you know, uh, I'll I'll go up to the front and I'll like hand it in and maybe see if you know they'll still accept it even though it's like a week late. I'm like, and obviously I didn't want to like get pissed off at this dude because also to be fair again, these answer scripts they do count for marks right, but they count like very minimal. Like you would have you would do these every single week in the semester, so like you'd have it like eight sets of these, and all in total they would combine to be like 12.5 percent of your mark. So, I think in total, I would have I would have lost like maybe two percent from my overall grade if this had not been marked. And uh, thankfully, the Kokoro, the guy was very nice. Oh, sorry, not the guy. The guy obviously was a dick because he didn't hand my thing in. But the guy in charge was very nice, and then he said, "You know what? Fine, I'll I'll accept it." Because obviously, it's not like I could have adjusted any of my answers since I didn't actually have it. So he said, "Oh, it's okay, I'll mark it and fine, whatever." Because again, also. It wasn't worth a lot. It was worth, effectively speaking, 2% of my overall grade. So, I wouldn't mind it. I wouldn't have minded if I didn't get the mark anyway. So, it's not like I was in a dire need for that 2%. And, uh, eventually he, he's like, the guy said, okay, no, it's fine. Yeah, I'll take it and I'll mark it. I'm like, okay, cool, thanks. So, since, since, you know, he said he will mark it, I was like, oh, you know, it's fine. It's water under the bridge. I still get my marks anyway. I don't really mind. Uh, no hot feelings. Don't worry about it, dude. And then as soon as the, the guy walked away, the guy that, like, forgot to hand in my script. My friend, who was sitting next to me the entire time, not saying a word, silent the entire time, you know, staying out of it and, like, just listening, doing his work. As soon as the other guy leaves, he turns to me and says, Shanaha, what is wrong with you? What do you mean? He's like, how are you, how are you not pissed off at that guy? How are you not mad? I'm like, oh, well, I am kind of mad. But he's like, how did you not just, like, shit on him? He, he literally didn't hand your work in. I'm like, yeah, but I mean, I still get the marks out, so it doesn't really matter. And my, my friend, to this day, he still does not let me down for it. For essentially letting a guy get away with taking my script and not handing it in. And, uh, wait, you didn't... Wait, where were you thinking it was going then, Kokoro? If you weren't expecting the guys to, like, not hand my stuff in. And, uh, do you do too much group work in uni? You have a group right now and you cannot for the life of you get them to meet and go, Oh my goodness, Kokoro, I feel so bad for you because of the fact that you have to do group work during COVID. Because trust me, I also had to do a lot uh, of... Oh, you thought that he would have changed the name. Oh my goodness. That would have been horrible. But also I think... I feel like hand my handwriting is very, for lack of better terms, unique in that it is very disgustingly bad. Uh, to be fair, he could have done that because I... Uh, I always write in pencil, so he could he could have very easily just erased my student number and my name and everything. So I, I always, no matter what, I always write in pencil, just because I'm scared of making mistakes and then scratching it out and making it look ugly. Uh, but coming back to your question about group work in uni, Kokoro, that is it is the worst thing, because of course as well, I, I think university does on purpose as well. They always arrange it so that you can never choose your own group. They they assign the groups for you, and it is almost always 
guaranteed so that the average group mark is the same. So, you are bound to almost always get, you know, a smart guy and a dumb guy. Oh, well, I won't say a dumb guy, but an overachiever and an underachiever. Very rarely do you get everybody on like the same leveling ground. I think in my entire university career, I've only had a single project where I could choose my group. And that was the best group project I had ever had. Because obviously, I could choose my friends. And we know we would all work together. Because we also, we lived in the same like building uh, on campus and stuff like that. However, when you're assigned a random group, that is the worst possible thing. And you would, th you would also think now, oh, because of everything's going online, surely everything should be much easier, right? Like, everything's online. You can just call each other up. No, in fact, people get lazier and it makes it even harder to communicate with people online. Uh, which is very, very counterintuitive. In fact, I know for a fact later on in the year I'm going to have some more group projects of my own and I'm not looking forward to those. I think the problem, like coming around to people being harder to communicate with despite being online, I think the big issue is that it is easier to fake not responding to people, if you know what I mean. Uh, for example, how do, how do I best describe this? The fact that you are always online. You know, there are some communication things like, for example, a Discord. Where, technically speaking, if your computer is on, most people have it set that it, it always starts up with your PC. You can always be online, technically speaking, on Discord. But that doesn't mean that you are like available to chat or whatever. Another thing is, again, I don't know if it's the same like worldwide, but here in South Africa, the, the most popular form of messaging others is WhatsApp or like mobile messaging. And again, that is, you're technically like always online, so you can always message them whenever. And in theory, you can always, they will always be able to receive your message. But the issue now is you can always just pretend and say like, oh, I wasn't checking my phone. Sorry, like, you know, I wasn't, yeah. Uh, and this is the example, like, like Red Robotic was saying there. Oh yeah, I forgot to check my Discord, like, and to be fair, I, yeah, I'm the exact same thing. I hardly check my Discord, I hardly check my messages, because again, you're always online, it's easy to fake it. I miss the days of, especially, I think, the best example I can give of this is online MMOs, specifically guilds. Back in the day, back before Discord and all that stuff, if you were in a guild, the only way to communicate with your guildmates was to be online in the game and speak in the guild chat. And obviously, if you aren't online, you don't see the guild messages. But now, everybody expects you to always have Discord for if you join like a guild and stuff like that. And so that you can always, they can always like bug you and be like, hey, have you done your, your daily missions or whatever and stuff like that. I miss the days where, again, like that's, that, that, I, think that's a, I think that's a big issue. Because right now, or oh, sorry, not right now, but now you're expected to always be involved, like be able to drop at the moment's notice to be able to get online in the game. Whereas back in the old day where you didn't have Discord and you couldn't be pestered offline, you would only be involved in the game when you wanted to. When you actually logged into the game and said, hey, I am actually on the game right now. I am ready to chat and ready to talk about guild stuff. The moment you go offline, you're completely cut off. You don't have to get worry about any of that stuff. I still remember uh, that was the, the best time I ever had in an MMO was years ago in high school where Discord was not a thing yet, and I was in a guild that didn't have a Discord. That way, you could control yourself. You could go online and speak with your guildmates and have fun with them, and when you logged off, that was it. You, don't, you wouldn't get pestered afterwards and saying, hey, when are you gonna come back on? Hey, let's do a dungeon together, and stuff like that. And uh, I, again, like coming back now to, to work stuff as opposed to like gaming. Uh, the big issue then is, of course, how easy it is uh, do the same thing now and be like there's no way to say hey if you want to message me message me now now I can always just say oh you know I didn't check my, my, my whatsapp messages I didn't check my discord messages uh, let's see but enough I feel like I have not done any work whatsoever on this puzzle so let me actually help out now Yeah, group projects are always the bane of my existence. I think it's the bane of everybody's existence. I still don't remember. Some of the, the worst group projects I had were... Okay, I, I'll, I'll tell a story of the worst group project I had ever had. It was second year. 
Second year where... Okay, so I'm, I will just give you the prompt of what our project was. And bear in mind, this is for a second year engineering group, right? This isn't like a final year, full, fully fledged engineers or anything. This is for second years. We had to design. And when I say design, you have to like draw up the mock of uh, you know, what it would look like. You have to do the calculations as well to prove why it will work and all that stuff. And we had to design a parking lot that would, or something like a structure that could go in a single parking space and accommodate more than one car. So I don't know if some of you have seen it where you have like this big carousel of cars, like a, like a Ferris wheel of cars so that you can park in it and like have it shipped around and like, so it would take up two spaces and it would just be very tall and you would have like 10 different cars that could park in it at once. A second year group had to design this. Everything in it. So like we had to design the, uh, the mechanical aspects of it, so the actual car bays and whatnot, the structural parts of it, and the electronics for it and whatnot, and all that stuff. Uh, th you thought you tried to go for the blue head? Oh, I mean, again, I'm glad to see that the, uh, the emphasis is always true here. Normally people always start with the, uh, the outer edges, but again, because it's Waifu Wednesdays, we don't go with the outer edges, we start off with the faces of the waifus first, which is what I love to see here. But yeah, so coming back to that uh, project of mine, it was a lot of work. It was a, a lot of work. Because again, we, have to, we had to design a whole flipping structure and stuff like that. And I still remember at the end of the entire process, we, when we handed the thing in, we had like an interview with the supervisors to say like, oh, how did you find the project and stuff like that. And one of the questions I asked, I asked, I, I still remember this to this day. I asked the, the supervisor, so say we're like, once we graduate and once we're actual engineers, is this, because th this project was hell for me and everybody, it was a shit ton of work. It was difficult. There was a lot of issues and it was a lot of sleepless nights. So I went to the supervisor and I asked him, when we are actual engineers, is this what it's going to be like? Is, is, are these the type of projects we're going to be doing? You know, where we have to mold this entire structure, stuff like that. And he, he looked at us and he said, no, actually, if you were, if this were the real world scenario, this group of four of you, you would, in, the, your entire team would work on designing a single, like one single aspect of this, as opposed to the entire structure. So after hearing that, I'm like, so you purposefully made us do the entire thing, knowing full well that we would never, that this is a completely unreal scenario. Like you gave us a hundred times the work that a normal real engineering team would have to do. And he's like, yeah. But why? He's like, oh, it's just so you could get a taste of the real world. I'm like, cool. The real world sucks then is what I'm hearing. And uh, we do need one more piece though, it looks like. The red but is only down to one now, as opposed to two. But I think maybe it's a good thing, you know, overworking in uh, your studying years. You know, prepare for the worst now, so that when you actually go out into the real world, it's not as bad. And welcome to reality. Yeah, the, oh, there we are. The last piece, that's all ready, buddy, for the outer edges. I think I've said this before, but the reality is, in the real world, ideally, you don't work hard like that, you know, work 24-7. Ideally, in the real world, you try to work as little as possible to get away with doing as as little work as you possibly can while still getting paid. <laughs> uh, let's see. Because again, I think I've mentioned I had to do vacation work as like an unpaid intern at a, a company a couple of times. And... The secret that I learned in that, like, obviously, you were supposed to get work experience when you were doing an uh, internship there. But the only lessons I learned from working there was that you should try to do as little as possible while still getting away with it. Why would you, why would you, who in their right mind would, say, finish their task at work and then go up to their boss and be like, hey, I finished the work. Is there anything else I can do? I want to do more work. I want to, you know, work even harder. Maybe that's just me being cynical and... Uh, 
maybe I'm ruining myself or any future possible hires. Hopefully, like, no, nobody's hearing this and thinking, hmm, maybe I should not hire this guy. <laughs> a fake version of reality that we made up, so you know about the Yeah, that's true. It's like a scare tactic. Uh, speaking, actually, of people hiring me and stuff like that, it's very funny. After I graduated, I made a, a LinkedIn profile because I feel like that's a that, that's the professional thing to do, right? And <laughs> every now and then, I get an email from LinkedIn, like the website, saying, "Hey, you know, here's your recap of the week. Three people checked out your profile, and I'm just like, oh, you poor things. What what are, what are, what are you what are you what are you little rascals doing peeking at my profile, huh? What are you doing over there? Are you looking for a new hire, huh? Hmm? Let's see. It's like the... I mean, LinkedIn is just the workspace Facebook, right? Uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, at least that's what it feels like. Uh, so I guess when people, like, visit your LinkedIn profile, it's kind of like Facebook stalking. In a sense. Oh, this is the boot. There we go. Uh, but I always just remember some tip that's uh, somebody told me. It was like, yeah, as soon as you graduate, make a LinkedIn profile you know, to help you get a job or something like that. I'll be honest, looking at my LinkedIn profile, I don't think it's going to help me get any jobs. These girls have many weird bits and bobs. I mean, uh, do they really? I mean, I guess this was just the, the 2000 aesthetic. With uh, this crazy clothing and stuff like that. I mean, in theory, we could have gone with a, a maid outfit as well. Because if I'm not mistaken, all of these girls they work at the main, like, once they're recruited as part of the, the Mew Mew Force, they all work at, the, at that one guy's cafe. Man, imagine being that guy that gets to run the main cafe, having his own harem of these five girls. Although, then again, though, they're all, like, 15 years old, so maybe I shouldn't say that. Actually, another thing about that is kind of weird now, that if you think about it. A guy recruiting a bunch of 15-year-old girls to work at his maid cafe... Hmm. You know what? It's anime, though. I'm sure there's some reasonable explanation for it. I just don't think about it too much. It's anime. Don't worry about it. Anime logic does not apply. Uh, let's see. Where does this go? What is that dark purple? Oh. So, up here? Uh, there's a lot of pink left, and I... Okay, well, I mean, it makes sense. The pink girl is right up front and center, so... Her having the most amount of pieces left over is understandable. But, the question is, where? I'm more curious on finishing the girl on the right. Where is the... Where is her tummy? Her tummy pieces are what I'm interested in. Yeah, this is the bell thing? The bottom of her shoe, actually, over here. Oh! And actually, speaking- like, since we were speaking about uh, MMOs earlier, talking about the guild chat and whatnot, uh, the other day, was it last, last week? Last Friday. I start. <laughs> Thankfully, I hope nobody else saw it actually, now that I think about it. But uh, at the start of the stream on Friday, where we played Pokemon. Pokemon. Master Duel, Yu Gi Oh! The first hour of it was trying out new. Lost Ark. The new MMO. Well, not really new, but the recently released MMO. And, uh. We came to the conclusion after about an hour or so 
that it was absolutely garbage. Like, the, going through that leveling process and, like, rushing through all of that story, it felt like utter trash. However, later on, on the Saturday, over this weekend, I went back to it. And I started playing it a bit more. I got over the, the big slump of the mindless fetch quests and kill X amount of monsters here, stuff like that. And then, I reached, I won't say the end game, but the latter half. And, uh, I'm not gonna lie, it's actually kind of fun. <laughs> the uh, dungeons and whatnot in the, uh, stuff like that are surprisingly kind of fun. But again, I don't know if I'll play it that much. Because MMOs, ew, stinky. PU. I don't feel like getting a second job to play an MMO, essentially. Oh, that has to be part of the tummy, right? But I know, I think I've said it before, but like, that MMO I was talking about from high school, I don't think I will ever have a better experience in an MMO than back then. It was a game, I don't even know if anybody will know of the game I'm talking about, but it was a game called Aura Kingdom. And it was like a, one of those just generic free-to-play anime MMOs. And it was not great by any means whatsoever. But the group of friends I made in that game, oh my goodness, that made it worth it. I think I still speak to them every now and then today, even. Because again, I think the, the joy was that that was around about the time where we were in a guild, but we, w we wouldn't have the requirement of having Discord. So we could always bug each other off offline and stuff like that. So the only time I ever interacted with them was when I wanted to and when I actually, I, I would actually, I remember, I would actually log onto the game to just speak with the friends and stuff like that. That's when you know that, you know, you're willing to log into a game just to speak with them, regardless of Discord and whatnot. Ooh, we're getting, we're getting the tummy done now of the purple girl. We've got a belly button done. Whoa. Alright, all focus on the purple girl now. We have to get this belly. Oh! And... Boss is like, what, the bra piece? Can't find the bottom part of the... The bell, the right anymore. Oh, like the... Oh, for the tail thing. Ah, let's have a look at see. There's also a very real possibility that it's hidden somewhere. Oh, never mind, you found it. I was gonna say, there's a very real possibility that there are some pieces hidden underneath the actual puzzle itself. Alright, we've got the purple girl's tummy done. I'm happy. As expected, because of how much pink there is, the pink girl is the one left standing. The final one. Uh, let's see. Where? I don't actually think now, like, do I remember any of the other episodes of the girl? I know for a fact. I mean, obviously you can tell by the way she looks as well. The yellow girl is like some monkey. And I think she gets her power when they go to like some mountainside inn, I think? Or like a spa, hot spring place? I forget. And also, if you're wondering, by the way, the music in the background is just uh, a Pokemon... I think it's Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl playlist? It's actually the official playlist. 
from the official Pokemon channel. The reason why I chose it is because I had to think of some background music and I just, I had the flashback reminder of how yesterday we were talking about which Pokemon we would smash or pass on. So since that was the first thing that jumped into my mind, I, I said, fuck it, we'll use that then. I wonder, the, the thing I was surprised about is that there is actually a, um, that there's actually, this is actually a thing, you know, that there is an official playlist of, well not a playlist, but like it's an official one and a half hour long video of Pokemon songs. Because didn't Nintendo recently get into the news, or not really the news, but didn't Nintendo recently do a thing where they just copyright struck a bunch of their, of like, ripped game audio and game soundtracks and then people were complaining saying oh but they never upload their own music and then lo and behold i found <laughs> some official music uploaded of course it's, it's on the japanese version of their channel so maybe that's also why people can find it and uh yes kokoro we were doing i said i wouldn't but we ended up doing it there apparently it's, it's like a trend almost of people everybody's suddenly going around rating which pokemon they would smash or not I, th I want to say Markiplier started it because he had a video on it the other day. And then I know some other people also started doing their own videos of Pokemon Smash slash Pause. Essentially just Pokemon rating things. And uh, it was very scary because we did only the first two gens, so 251 Pokemon. And I think out of those 251 Pokemon, we had a Smash counter of like 70 or something, which is dangerously high, I want to say. Almost a third of the first two gen Pokemon. And correct, it was Market Player, so yes, yes, yes. And of course, as soon as one big streamer does something, everybody's gotta follow suit. Everybody's gonna uh, chase that trend, you know, get those numbers up. Ride that high, if you will. And also, welcome, Crazy Shadow. The yeah, the correct answer is all of them if you are brave enough. If there is a hole, there is a goal, after all. So I think, I know for a fact Markiplier started, because I, I, I remember, I said this yesterday. I randomly opened up Twitter one day, and Markiplier was trending. And so out of curiosity, I said, oh, let me click on that. And it was a bunch of people, like, tweeting reaction GIFs and stuff like that, of, I can't believe he would, sp I think he, I can't believe Markiplier would not smash Vaporeon! Or stuff like that. Nice to back off roll. Ah, it's always nice to have you by. I think the... After the Markiplier thing, the, there was somebody else I know of that did a video, and his name is Ludwig. He was he was that guy that did the whole long-ass subathon on Twitch and then moved over to YouTube. And then I don't know if it, I don't know if it counts as a similar thing. But I know uh, two of the uh, Niji Sanji EN girls, Pomu, Pomu and uh, Selen, I think. The two of them did a thing where they rated, because obviously I assume because they're in a corporate company, they can't really go around saying they want to fuck a Pokemon. They said which Pokemon they would eat or not. Yeah. Where are, there's a lot of skin left, I think, left over. What is that? Is this the blue girl's sleeve slash cleavage? Where does this part go? I'm trying to find it somewhere. Uh, all right. So now it's it's pretty much just the uh, the pink girl and her dress. Maybe? Ooh, hang on. There we go. Now that I think about it, I'm actually curious. I wonder if people will prefer this art style? Because I know some people, they always have that argument of, Oh, I hate how new anime looks now. Like, I remember olden anime, like 2000s anime. 
that it's everything's gotten too too soft and too cutesy. I hate the new uh, the new look of anime and stuff like that. I'm curious about this versus. Let me have a look and see. Is there a screenshot of the the new Tokyo Mew Mew? Tokyo Mew Mew Mew. And I welcome uh, welcome as well as Katon. Because now that I realize that this is a reboot, so I, at first like at first I thought these five girls here are a different set of five girls, but now that I realize. Since it's the reboot, I'm guessing these are meant to be the exact same girls. It makes you wonder, like... This? Oh, hang on. Uh, there is a nice picture. Open image and use This? Oh, how does, how does that look? This compared to the old... This versus this. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, now that I look at it, yeah, it's definitely a reboot because now that I'm starting to see the, the similarities. Holy shit, that's true. That, that's the correct way to think about it. Crazy Shadow. You don't want to be one of those people that argue about how their anime should look. Uh, I preferred, I prefer back in the old day. I'm a, I'm a hipster anime watcher. Huh. In fact, I'm not gonna rewatch the new season. I'm just gonna rewatch the old season again instead. Back when it was real and the original. Old picture has a better composition. Here's the thing though. I do not know anything about art. I see I see a nice thing. I I say look good. The new one just shows the the design. That's yeah. Like the differences in the design is a lot more noticeable here. I suppose the differences in the differences in the clothing is a lot more apparent in the new one, but the differences in like the f I want to say like the differences in like the actual people like the characters themselves look a lot more prominent here. All I'll say is I I I am liking the purple girl in the new look. I I prefer the the new purple girl look. And so I prefer the new version purely for that. You love Trigon to death, but if there's a new one, you'd still love it. Ah, I mean, yeah, again, if if you love the anime enough, it shouldn't matter. And the, yeah, the new wolf. Oh, woo, indeed. Woo. Oh, I should be, I should be careful because again, these, these are fifteen-year-old girls, so I probably should be careful about what I say. Right? How old are they? I mean, they're always like high school girls, right? So. It's true, they're drawings. <laughs> they are not real girls. Contrary to popular belief. No matter how many fat wee botakis out there that are saying, She's real, I want to marry her! At the end of the day, it is just a drawing. But there we go, there is the OG, the original Tokyo Mew Mew Girls. But now, uh, let's start a puzzle for the new and improve- well, I would say new and improved, but the new girls. Uh, let me find one though. Where is a good image of the new girls? Oh, this isn't really much. I guess we could just use the promotional image. People just like the view. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> no, no, yeah. Let, heaven forbid you insult somebody's virtual anime waifu. Or else you will feel their wrath upon yourself. And the god yellow is so small. Oh. She's like the youngest one. Yeah, she's like the, the tiny little kid, right? But yeah, purple. Purple, I think, is going to be a lot of people's favorite. It's just based off the design alone. I mean, she's my favorite just for that design. When you get to, yeah. it, it, she appeals to so many different things, I feel like, with that outfit. The thighs, the tummy. Ooh. Exactly, Kokoro gets it. She's real in your heart. And that's where it matters most, Red Robotic Man. She's real in your heart. 
<laughs> exactly. So I, the eyes do save lives, and hers are definitely the best. Uh, but let me start up the new one and get the game link. Into the Sasuke tab. Ah, uh, here's the thing. I don't know which is what Sasuke are you referring to, Redbotic? Because that is a very generic name. So here is the new one, and of course, it's going to be the new promotional image. I have a feeling this is going to be a little bit harder. One, because there are now 400 pieces in this puzzle, and two, because that background is going to be absolutely abhorrent with all of the, the the blended colors and whatnot oh from azamanga dio oh my goodness now that's a show i haven't heard about in a while i still remember i, I think that's one of the the old enough anime where if you I'm, i don't know if it's still up but on on youtube there is just a straight up legit somebody just uploaded the entire season uh, like the full anime on YouTube and they didn't even do the thing where you know they crop it down to uh, take up a quarter of the the frame and then they speed it up by a uh, like a fraction and they flip the image around horizontally and stuff like that like it's all just as is because I think it's old enough that people don't care about it anymore or, or that not that they don't care about it but they don't care about chasing for the copyright strike and stuff like that which is a very uh, topical thing as well I should say about people watching anime on uh, Twitch. And yeah, there is a lot of purple. It's gonna make it that much harder to find the purple waifu. Uh, but again, this is also 400 pieces, so pieces are a lot smaller. Things are gonna be a little bit tougher. I know what I can work on there. I myself will be working on the little logo. You're an Osaka type yourself. Ah, I see. It's always interesting. Again, I, we have to be very careful now to not break out into the, the, the classic waifu wars. Whenever people start talking about which girls they like, it's always dangerous territory. I mean, I myself, I'm in the camp that <clears throat> I don't really care. You never know. There are some people that are very adamant. Like, you like who they like, or else. Because heaven forbid people have their own preferences and, you know, that they like different things from others, because who would even think such a thing, right? <laughs> but yeah, that's true. it is fun arguing. <laughs> who doesn't love a good argue? Yeah, I understand that. <laughs> and yeah, exactly, crazy. Like, again, ignorance is bliss. Why worry about what other people think? Just think to yourself. That is the correct mentality. I will say though, uh, Red Red Robot Man brings up a funny point about it's fun arguing. Uh, coming back to when I was in university, a very interesting time was when in first year, there was, you know, in university, you always there's always clubs, right? And uh, you always think, oh, what club should I join and stuff like that. There's always, of course, there's the sports clubs and whatnot. And uh, in our residence, so like in our little building of guys that stay together, there was one club called, of course, the Debate Club, which is, well, as you would expect, a club about debating. And I had not at first I was like, nah, that's not for me. But one day they said, hey, they need people. You know, there's a debating tournament coming up soon. And we need somebody. And I said, you know what? I, I, I can speak. I can argue, I can talk, sure, let me sign up. And so it was myself and two other guys. And we were the debating team. And we would go up against other residences, so other like, buildings of people that live together, their own teams. And it was very interesting. For those of you who don't know how the debate format works, the way it works is that there are two teams, uh, three each, and there are three there are three speaking phases, so each person speaks once. Oh, sorry, no, four times, I think, actually. So each person speaks at least once. You have the introduction, essentially, where you state 
what side you are arguing for, like on the topic, and you state what you're going to bring up and stuff like that. The second one is where the second speaker is essentially elaborating on the on all of your topics, so laying out all of your information and all of your points and logic. And the third speaker essentially is the rebuttal to basically say, no, fuck you, to the other team. After their spe second speaker went, you say, hey, no, that guy's stupid. What he said is wrong. Actually, no. Uh, and stuff like that. And I was the second speaker. So I was the guy that dished out facts and logic, essentially. For lack of better terms. And it was very interesting because I always thought that, you know, you, you should obviously do a lot of research and preparation to know your topic. The way it worked was that an hour before the actual debate, you would not know anything. You don't know your topic, you don't even know what side you are arguing for. An hour before the actual debate, you get told, hey, this is your topic, you are going to be for the topic or against the topic. And in that one hour, you have to brainstorm and come up with as many arguments as possible to validate why you are right and they are wrong. And you have to also like predict what the other people are going to say and whatnot. It was actually very intense. I remember um, those, hour those hours of preparation were actually very stressful because it would just be me myself and the two other guys in somebody's room just with all of our laptops out there just researching like guys okay wait hang on i, fu I found this source here it, it states this fact and then immediately we would say oh but what if they bring up this topic and then we would try and like immediately like rebuttal it and sort of prepare for the debate and the arguments and whatnot and i remember we actually made it very far we made it to the final round uh, from like, so we won like three different debates, and I'll admit, the debate topics were they, sometimes they were like sort of whatever, right? They were, you know, your typical should abortion be allowed, um, and stuff like that. I remember one of our topics was should should we be allowed to interrogate people? I think or something like that. You'd bring beers. Oh, trust me. They're, they're, I don't drink, but the other two guys, they were drinking beers to, like, calm themselves down and whatnot. Uh, or to, like, just to relax or whatever. But yeah, so most of the time, the topics were pretty much whatever. However, in the final round, we got a very interesting topic. The topic was... Uh, bear in mind, this was in my first year, so this was in 2017. In 2017, the topic was... Should we assassinate Donald Trump? Because he was president at the time. Which was a wild topic. And I actually thought it was pretty funny because, you know, it's a very interesting, very funny topic. It's not your generic, oh, abortion is good or bad, or whatever, and stuff like that. Or, oh, should we bring back the, the, the corporal punishment, you know? Should we be allowed to kill people that have killed others and stuff like that? Or the death penalty and whatnot. And the interesting thing was that our team was arguing against the topic. So we were saying, no, you should not assassinate Donald Trump. And of course, again, because this was 2017, everybody loved to hate Donald Trump. As long as you weren't in America. So we were trying to fight against this. And I, I had a lot of fun with it. And I, I will never forget this. Like, okay, bring it around to the point why we, I'm talking about this. Since Red Butter Man was saying that arguing is fun, I still remember. What you can do is if somebody else is speaking, you know, they, ha they are allowed to speak, but what you can do is you can raise your hand and raise a point of order to say, like, hang on, can I interject you and just ask you something quickly? And you're allowed to do that. But of course, the speaker, the person currently speaking, must first accept it and say, yes, what, what would you like to say? You can't obviously just blurt out and say, hey, actually, uh, fuck you. You have to actually raise your hand and ask, like, can I raise a point of order? But the speaker does not have to allow it. The speaker can, if they want to, they can ignore it and say, actually, no, I'm not going to take your point of order. But obviously, each speaker has to at least take like two, I think, to show that they, you know, they're not just being a pussy and not trying, and they're like, they're too scared for confrontation. Now, when I was doing my speech, I had already answered many different points of order. I think I had answered two or three already. All from the same guy. The same one guy that kept on like, making it very loud and be like, oh, I have a point of order. He would slam the table down with one hand and like raise the other hand. And I would, I would accept them every time. I accepted three of them. 
But of course, this would eat away at my own time to speak about what I wanted to speak about. Then finally, the fourth time, I think I said something very outrageous. So what he did was, he, again, he slammed his hand down on the table, raised his hand, and he actually stood up. And in the middle of my speech, also, in the background, the, people came to watch, because this was the finals. So there, were, there was an audience of people. I was speaking, I was talking about how, yes, if we... Here's the thing though, if you realize, if you assassinate Donald Trump, he would stand up. Point of order, I shout, I barked at him, I shouted at him and said, Sit down, you fool! Not now! And he shut up, and everybody, everybody in the room suddenly just started laughing. We were like, ooh. Because I just suddenly burst out at the guy uh, for trying to interrupt me. And then, uh, I just, I, I had like a smile on my face the entire time. The funniest part as well is later on, while I kept on speaking, I, like I was, I was like dominating this now. I, I was saying dominating, but like, he would, he did not speak up again because like I had put him in his place. So I would, I would, just, I just kept on going on, stating my points. No, no comeback whatsoever from the guy. Later on, like a minute later, the guy sneezed, and I, I don't know why, but out of reflex, I paused again in the middle of my arguments, and I said, "Bless you" to the guy. And I don't know why, but that just diffused the situation. Everybody just started laughing because the guy that I had just shat on a second ago, uh, I said, "Bless you" to him. I was being nice to the guy. Uh. But yeah, that, we ended up losing because, uh, sure, why not? Doesn't really matter. But I will never forget that. Just the joy. Because also, that guy was a big guy. Like he, oh my goodness. Everything's suddenly loading up now. Uh, that guy was like a very big guy. Like he could absolutely, if we were to get into a fist fight, he would just squish me. And uh, I think it was just that, that as well. Like the fact that this big beefy guy, like he, he was like some rugby player or whatever. Uh, it was shut down by me. I, I, I was, I was kind of, I was kind of fun. And then of course, afterwards though, we shook hands and we're like, ah, no hot feelings. Obviously, you know, it's, it's all part of the uh, the argument's sake. That, that was the the biggest interesting thing to me, that you can have two groups of people so adamantly go at each other, calling people like calling each other out for being wrong and stuff like that, and then afterwards be like. Okay, shake hands, no hot feelings, no, yeah. That was, all, that was all just like an act, essentially. Because oftentimes, more often than not, you would have to argue against something that you would not really stand for. Because again, you couldn't choose which side you were on for the topics. And born leader, come on, yeah, that's true. That's how I get my, my troops into order. I shout at them, put them in their place. But yeah, that's a... Uh, a lot of, this, I have a lot of fun stories of university. I, I miss, I kind of miss being on campus and all that stuff and the shenanigans we get around to. But that just means though we can make more memories now though. Let's not live in the past. Let's live in the now, the present, and the future. Enough dwelling in the past and focus on making future memories to look back on now. Time to actually help out on the puzzle instead of yammering and hammering away. Uh, all right. Now, once again, again, you love to see it. We start off obviously with the edges and also the faces. Now, more importantly, I want to look for the tummy. That's what I want to complete. In fact, I've already found a little bit of it here. I found like the, the edge of the bra. I wonder, maybe the, hmm, maybe the pellet like behind them actually might help now that I think about it. Because it is a bit of a gradient, so you can kind of use it. I still, I, I still one day, by the way, speaking of like the gradient in the background, want to do a puzzle with maybe like a thousand pieces where all of them, it is just a solid color. Maybe not now, maybe, maybe when I make it big and I have like, Hundreds of viewers that so I can actually get good help. Or more help, rather. Sorry. Because heaven knows how long that would take. Okay. This 
is the hair that goes up there somewhere. I am like a lightning bolt finding all of these little tummy pieces. Where is the rest though? That is the question. It's crazy how just adding like 60 more pieces, so it's 400 pieces as opposed to 360. And also, the, the change in what the actual picture is, how much harder it makes an image. There's one last bottom piece as well that we need, and then we'll have the border done. Where is it? That is the question. Oh, found it. There we go. Now we have the entire border done. Now we work our way inwards. I know for a fact I'm going to be working on a purple gold. Actually, I need, I need to look up what their actual names are. So what better way than to go to the Tokyo Mew Mew Wiki? And also welcome Spike. And uh, speaking- oh yeah. Again, if you don't know, the Mew Mew girls, when they are hired, they all go and work as a maid. So what better way to bring out a maid of our own? Think of this as my Tokyo Mew Mew transformation. Power, Mew Mew Grace, Mew Mew Style in your face! Ah! Hello everybody, it's me again, the maid! Consider it my audition for the next series? Oh my goodness, Spike, if if I'm the one auditioning, does that mean that you are the, you are the, um, where, where's the name? Are you going to be the, uh, where's his name, where's his name? Uh, uh, what's his name? Are you going, oh! Are you going to be the- oh, I, I don't know, where's his name? <laughs> I, for, I forget the name of the guy, but there's a main character that, uh... The girls all fall for. Are you gonna be that man for me, Spike? Hmm? Uh, but let's have a look and see. Well, at least we found out the one girl that is important. Uh, Fujiwara is the name of this girl. Woo! And look at her. <laughs> okay. And we were right. She is only 15 years old, but you know what? It's fine. She is just a cartoon. It doesn't matter when she's an anime girl. Uh, but let's see, where is her name? Oh, not her name. Where is everybody else? So, let's see, the purple girl is Fujiwara. Where are the other girls? Ichi- oh, well, I'm gonna assume that Ichigo is the, uh, the pink girl, because it's a strawberry. And then Mint, I'm gonna assume is the green girl because, I mean, oh, I was wrong. They got me. What all switcheroo. The mint girl is not the minty green one, but it is in fact the blue one. And I just noticed now the green one is in fact named Lettuce. <laughs> Retasu Midorikawa. Uh, what is the last one then? The yellow one. What is her name going to be? Uh, Buling Huang? Buling Huang is apparently... The uh, yellow one. She's apparently Chinese. But now, okay, where is the other guy? Uh, what is his name? Shanahat Chan? Oh, why, yes. What is it, Sora? You call my name? What is it you would like from me? Do you need my assistance? Uh, let's see. Uh, enough about that, though. Let's go back and uh, help out the fellow Mew Mew girls. Now that we know all of their names, I think, <laughs> i already forgotten all of them, but uh, now we can help build them up together in the jigsaw puzzle. 
Man, I would like to join them. Look at that. If I would choose one of them, I would choose to be the purple girl. Look at that outfit. Mm -mm -mm. Ah, surely she must be getting cold. I mean, look at that belly. So exposed. How cold she must get. Oh, such a poor little girl. Chanhella. <gasps> Sora, you. Flattery will get you everywhere, Sora. But no, we're not loving me today. In fact, we are loving the uh, the girls here. Uh, let's have a look and see. Where are the rest of them? But, Spike, though, seeing as though if this is my audition, well, what do you say? Would I make it? Could I be a part of the Mew Mew girls? I even, I even when I showed up, I did the chant because I remembered it. Mew Mew power, Mew Mew grace, Mew Mew style in your face. Yeah! That's what the that's what the pink girl says whenever she transforms, I think. I think can I even find the them saying it? Can, can, can we look at this transformation? For those of you who don't know, whenever whenever girls do the transformation, they always have that, that crazy little uh silhouette style. And oh my goodness! Oh! Thank you for the raid! Hello, Obdini, thank you for that raid. Let me give you a quick shout-out. Uh I promise this is this is not expected. You've come at a very strange time. I promise I'm not always like this, but just for you, I suppose I can stay like this a bit longer. I'll make it to the next stage of this. <gasps> I'm glad then. I'm glad, Spike. What do I have to do to make it past, to make it into the, the final round? I'd be willing to do anything. I promise. I really, really want to become a, uh, a Mimi girl. I'd do absolutely anything to make sure I could get there. And also, welcome, Obdini. I see you were playing Dark Souls. <gasps> Are you excited for Elden Ring, maybe? Are you doing some preparations for Elden Ring coming out uh, soon? I think? Or is it already out? I forget. Isn't it? It's coming out on Friday, I think, right? Uh, no worries for the shadow. Don't worry, you have seen the other model. <gasps> okay, good. <sighs> so that I haven't been unmasked then. But wait, no. Isn't this a tragedy? Isn't it? Isn't my, my super secret identity... You've seen my identity, Obini. Oh no! This is tragic! Every, every Mew Mew girl is supposed to keep their identity a secret if I'm not mistaken. Oh, I'm a failure of a Mew Mew girl. Oh, I can't handle this. I have to, I have to hide. Oh, I'm so sorry. I can't believe the secret has gotten out. You know who I am. Oh no, wait! Gondola! Gondola! Gondola, asshole, thank you for the rain, asshole, Gondola. I was I was in the middle of crying and running away, but I guess... I, could, I can't change back now, or else. But welcome back, Gondola. You thought you were going to miss the maid, well, you came just back in time, Gondola. But welcome. And I see Kokoro is working on a, on a very... Oh, well, no, sorry, Red is working in a very cultured area. We should all be as good as possible. And wait a minute. <gasps> Gondola, you are also playing Dark Souls 3. What is it with Dark Souls 3 players and wanting to raid into the Mimi Power Girls? Is there some sort of secret collaboration going on between Dark Souls enjoyers and Mimi Power enjoyers? But welcome, Gondola. I see you've, you've upgraded. You are not, pl not playing Dark Souls 2 anymore. You're playing Dark Souls 3. But welcome, raiders, though, from Gondola. Oh, puzzles are pretty big among Japanese anime nerds. I mean... I guess so. Are, are they? I'm not really too sure, Charlie, but welcome as well. No, it's still two? Wait, hang on. Are my eyes deceiving me? Hang on, Gondola? It said that you were streaming Dark Souls 3. Don't tell me Streamlabs is being wrong there. Or were you doing a little sneaky sneaky and actually playing Dark Souls 2 in the Dark Souls 3 category? <gasps> you could get in trouble for that, you know, Gondola? Mm -mm -mm. Oh, it's exclamation mark. Oh my goodness. My poor eyes. I'm so sorry. My eyes aren't what they used to, Gondola. Please forgive this simple old maid. It's something that you've uh, heard? That they're a staple much. <gasps> Interesting. I've never heard about that. Well, now I know, though, Charlie. But also, welcome, though. Everybody from the raids from both Gondola and Obdini. My name is, of course, Shanahan. But, of course, this is... I'm, I swear, I'm not always like this. It's just because we're, we're doing a Mimi Power puzzle, I sometimes... I just... I had to transform into my... Uh, my maid form. In reality, I am but a mere bongo cat. But it's just every now and then, when I see these cute girls, I can't help but I want to be just like them. So I transform into a cute girl myself. 
Chanahe needs a new maid, it seems. Another maid? A third maid? Is, is there something wrong with me as well? <laughs> God, the, are you saying I'm broken? Are you saying that I'm not needed here anymore, Gondra? How mean of you! You, was, you said you were so excited to see me, and now you said you need to get rid of me? Fine, I know when I'm not wanted. I'm out of here. I hope you're happy with this gondola. Alright, what did you guys do? Why- why is it whenever I leave and I have the maid take over for the stream, she always comes back in tears? What do you- do you- what is wrong with you guys? Do you just bully her non-stop when she's on stream? At this rate, she's gonna quit and I don't know if I can find another replacement for her. She- she was complaining about how she's broke and nobody wants her anymore, which is a complete lie, I feel like. Every time she comes out, everybody's suddenly very excited whenever she comes out, but... I don't know what you guys said. Though it looks like we have some new people though, coming from uh, Orbdini and Gondola Gaming's stream, so... Welcome, everybody from those raids. Hopefully the maid didn't uh, creep you guys out too much. My name is, of course, Shanaha. And uh, I am the actual streamer here, not that maid. He normally screws things up, so... I'm the one in charge here, of course. And uh, bring her back. Bring her... I don't think I can bring her back. She's crying right now. You guys... Did something to her, I don't know. You know, if you don't treat her right, she's gonna leave, so... Yeah. I mean, that that is true. She is a woman, after all. If there's one thing that you can do to uh, get a woman to do what you want, it's give her money, so... <laughs> if you want, you can just pay her more, and I'm sure she'll come running back. After all, we... I mean, come on, a woman, am I right, guys? <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah. I feel like you're gonna have to pay a lot more to get her back. She was in quite a lot of tears, so... I don't know if the regular payment will be enough for that. Mm. Uh, she might be getting a bit too used- uh, She's been complaining about wanting increased wages and stuff like that, but you know... I mean, come on. Woman, am I right? I already pay a minimum wage and she wants more. Oh, my goodness. You don't know how difficult it was to find a... Uh, Made out in the streets there. Minimum wage workers. Kind of hard to find out. I'm doing squats. I mean, <sighs> do, I have, do I have to do some ex exercise? I mean, I have been sitting around all day, so I guess we can do some exercise. So let's do some squats. For Sora. Oh my goodness. Oh. Alrighty. You, you, you all better be doing this with me, by the way. Especially you, Sora. Since you're the one that is asking me to do this, you, you better be doing this with me. I would hate to hear that you are making me do this without you doing them yourself. You better be doing this with me, alright? We're gonna go all together on the same count. Ready? One. Down. You better be going down, Sora. I swear, if you are not go if you if your knees are not currently bent down and you are in the squatting position right now, and we're holding it, by the way. I have not counted back up. We are holding. We are holding the squat right now. Okay? Now, finally, back up. That is one. Sora, there is delay, I know. You had better be doing this with me. And everybody else, if you aren't working on the puzzle, you're doing squats. One or the other. You're either working on squats or you're helping with the puzzle. You better choose right now and you better not be doing nothing or else. All right, two, down, and up. And three, down, and up. And four, down, and up. Five. Six, back up. Seven, back up. Eight, back up. Nine, back up. Now for the last one, we're gonna do this. We're gonna hold the last one. We're gonna go down on the 10th one and we're gonna hold it. All right, ready, 10. We're gonna go down and we're gonna hold it. And Sora, you pause the stream, but guess what? As soon as you play back that stream, it's gonna catch up. And then you know what's gonna happen? You're gonna go- Oh wait, shit, I forgot, it doesn't- It just skips ahead, it doesn't actually pay through everything. Fuck, Sora. I've been outsmarted. And now my legs are also starting to hurt, so in that case, we're gonna go back up. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Escalon, at least for saving me by letting me drink some water. But yeah, never gonna give you up. You had better be helping out then with uh, the jigsaw and be doing what uh, Kokoro is doing. Kokoro's been going to town on this, as is uh, Shadow Lord. 
I, I think we can see Kokoro chose the puzzle as opposed to the squats. Uh, but let's have a look and see. I can't believe it. Sora, I've been outsmarted. He has found the technology to get away from doing squats. I don't know why I added Lord. I don't- I'm sorry, I don't know why I added Lord. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Uh, but Crazy Shadow is also going cra uh, crazy on the jigsaw board. To be fair, who knows? Maybe- maybe that was the inner maid coming out there, calling people my lord. The maid effects are lingering still. <laughs> but alright, yeah, but before though, we were actually going to have a look and see... Uh, the... The transformation sequences. Uh, what are, can I show these? Because if I'm not mistaken, most transformation sequences in anime, in like Magical Girl anime, normally what happens is their clothes all shoot off and stuff like that. Uh, let's have a look and see. Let me pause the music. See what this looks like. Purple is the best girl. Purple is indeed the best girl, Spike. I mean, just look at this tummy. Uh, Mew Zakuro transformation. Please be safe. Please be safe to show. Oh, and it's even the Japanese version. Oh, oh. The silhouettes are fine, right? Oh, what is she? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Where were those hands? Oh, oh, okay, I mean, okay, well, silhouettes are fine, right? Silhouettes are fine. It's, f it's fire around her because she's flaming hot. Oh. Alright. We all, we all gotta be focusing now on building the purple girl. I, well, actually, you know what? I cannot wait to see what the new transformations look like now in the updated version. Because I will say... Uh, transformation sequences have been getting better and better with each year. There is one anime called uh, Simpho Gear. And... There is one, I think her name is uh, Kirika. The green girl with a spear. Her, transform her transformation sequence. Oh my goodness. Uh, it is almost criminal that that is allowed on uh, air. You hate Simpho Gear? Listen, Gondola. I think I only ever watched the first season of Simpho Gear. And I liked it. It's mecha anime singing idols. What's not to love about it? Is it because the girls are too cute that you can't focus on the actual story? In that case, I, it's understandable. But there is nothing wrong with Simpho Gear. Uh, let's see, where is... Da, da, da. We actually completed the blue goal first. How did we do that? How did we manage that? I say we, uh, it's more, mostly you guys, I, I've done nothing, but uh, Ogle at uh, Zakura, the purple girl. Is this? I don't know. Mm, here's more of the green. Oh man, it's gonna the the bottom half with all of the the pastel gradient colors is gonna be a little bit difficult, I think, when we get there. But we will cross that road when we get there. Where does this hair go? Huh? Oh, it's at the bottom there. Aha! Uh -huh. But let me actually see if I can find that transformation sequence. I listen. I was hesitant on showing the purple girl from Mimi Power Transforming. I don't know if I can show this one. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Simpho Gear Kitika Transformation. 
It was from some figure. Okay, yeah, it is absolutely her. <sighs> Can I show this? You know what? Fuck it. I'm willing to take the hit. Let me pause the music. Uh, so this is just them falling down in the sky. This is the build up, but just you wait. I don't, I don't understand why they have to like get so face to face to transform, but. Like, there's no way this is allowed. Okay, first things first, you'll notice boom. Uh, silhouettes. Uh, nothing is shown, technically speaking, yet. But uh, the camera angles zoom in on very specific parts. I mean, does, she ha does it have to be on a pole? I mean, I know she has a lance as a weapon, but does she have to be on a pole? And do, do her hands and feet have to be chained onto the thing? I don't know. But I'm glad it is. And oh! <laughs> What, uh, what, how, Gondola, how do you hate this? How, how can you hate that? How can you hate that, Gondola? Tell me. How can you see that and say that you hate that? Tell me how. It is literally impossible to hate that. I'm, I'm not even watching the entire show, but just that makes me like it. You know, earlier on, we were saying that maybe the, the maid's eyes were broken from not being able to read the, uh, the game. But, uh, maybe Gondola is the one with the eyes that need to be broken. And you completed the purple gold size. Okay, you know what? Gondola, you have redeemed yourself. You have redeemed yourself by working on something incredibly, incredibly important. And that is, uh, what is her name? I already forgotten her name. But purple gold thighs. In which case, you are, you have been redeemed. Only a true man, a, a man among men, would know what to focus on. That being her thighs. And also, I don't think I, don't think I said hello, but also hello as well, so never gonna give you up. Uh, let's see. Alright, let's see. Let me actually try and help out now. You're focusing on that one for a while? Oh. I mean, I... I <laughs> I'm also going to be focusing on the, the thighs for a while, trust me. Uh, where are the pink girl's knees? Where are her knees? Uh, you also trying to focus on, on, the, on the thighs, Kokoro? I see there are many thigh enjoyers out here. You got distracted by the green thighs. The thighs are a dangerous, dangerous thing. The question is though, we're nearing the completion of this puzzle. What puzzle could we possibly do next? Again, with uh, keeping in mind Waifu Wednesday as the uh, the theme of things, the only reason again why I chose Tokyo Mew Mew was because of the the recent announcement of the new season. I'm trying to think, what other recent Waifu news is there? What other puzzles that we could possibly build? Yoko is in Yoko Litna. I'm assuming Crazy Shadow. I mean, I see Kokoro is all aboard on that, so maybe that is a... I should have a look into that. And who knows, maybe we, we can summon uh, Nanase Kain as well. Seeing as uh, he's done a watch-along of Gurren Lagan as well. And he also loves his puzzles, I know.
Gurren Lagan is the best anime ever made. Oh, okay. Now is the time. Anybody, everybody, dogpile on Kokoro. Now is the time to at Kokoro with your argument of what is actually or what you think is the best anime. And start the dogfight in the chat. Let's go. Where's where's somebody with the obligatory? Actually, JoJo's is the best anime. Oh. Uh. Oh, here we are. Everybody saying, uh, "Crazy Shadow" saying Trigon. Red Red Buttock is saying that Gurren Lagann is just okay. You know, Kukuro on the on the back foot saying no. There's no argument. It's just true. Charlie coming in saying that Astro Fighter is Sun Raiders as well. Good and uh, Spy saying the good and it's fine, but it's bad in the second half. Ooh. Hot takes here. Hot takes all around. Uh, but I will probably have a look then and see if I can find a Yoko image then for the next puzzle. Because seeing as the people are finishing this one up very soon, let me quickly find an image right now. Uh, where's a good image? Uh, more, more specifically, a good usable image. But there we go, we have done the new set of Tokyo Mew Mew Girls. So up next will be Yoko Littner, as soon as I can find a usable image. Uh, I'm sure you understand what I mean when I say usable, because there are a lot of images that I don't think will fly. Ah, ooh. I mean, it doesn't fit the... Hmm. Does this work? Is this Tokyo Mimu? It is Tokyo Mimu. Specifically, Charlie, it is the the new. What oh, sorry? It's called Tokyo Mew Mew New. It's the reboot, so this is the new girls. We just before the raids actually, we built a image of the old girls, so this is the OG style from the 2000s. And then this is from the a promotional image from the upcoming season in like June or July, I think, of this year. But yes, it is indeed Tokyo Mew Mew. They missed an opportunity to call it Tokyo New New. Oh, New Mew! <laughs> I think, I don't know if they, they just wanted to go for the joke of having uh, a lot of the same word over and over. Mew Mew New. But yeah, I agree. Tokyo New Mew or Tokyo Mew New would have been funnier. Where is an image of Yoko? Uh, I'm looking to see. You never watched the show, actually? I uh, I think a lot of people watched it. Well, to be honest, I also, I watched it only like a couple of episodes, but again, because it was only airing, I was only able to catch episodes that I could catch. Like, I didn't have the, the pleasure of being able to stream everything or being able to uh, download a bunch of episodes and then watch it in my own time. It was the 4Kids one. I think that was the one that I watched, the 4Kids one. Uh, the English version, if, if you will. Yoko Littner wallpaper. Uh, ooh, this is a nice one. The only issue is that it. Oh, so many of these have a lot of white space, which is going to be very annoying. So let me see if there's a nicer one. Four kids, yeah. I'm sure every everybody's heard about the four kids censoring, especially with um, what was it, Yu-Gi-Oh, where like they replace guns with finger pointing and stuff like that. Oh, here's a good one, I think. No worries, I have found a usable image. Wasn't that One Piece? Ah. 
think a lot of shows had a very weird, like, let, let's be real, four kids had a lot of weird censorship. Give us a tear, Gondola puzzle. We did do a, a Yu-Gi-Oh puzzle not too long ago, Gondola. And uh, instead of tear, it was the better waifu. It was, it was female Kaiba <laughs> instead. The, the real number one waifu. You don't know about Yu-Gi-Oh, but you do know that One Piece had a gun replaced by some spring-powered hammer. Oh my goodness, what? And oh yeah, Kokoro with the, the line that I just love jelly donuts. I think that was from the, the Pokemon one, right? Because the original was Onigiri. Which was the, like the rice things, rice balls. But I did find a good good and Lagan image. Uh, let's let's put 360. Game link. And it was the, uh, yeah the rice balls dubbed, dubbed as jelly donuts. Did I forget they did also. They, did did they show donuts? I can't remember. Uh, this of course is going to be the link. This is the image. Let me also update the command. I, I can't remember, did they only speak about jelly donuts or did they actually also like replace uh, a rice ball with a jelly donut like visually? I can't remember. Oh, the art was still Onigiri, so they, they just called Onigiri uh, je a jelly donut. <laughs> Don't replace the R with N. Worst mistake of your life, from what? In, uh, in Onigiri. Oh, ori, ori, gini. Wait, hang on. So instead of saying Onigiri, you would say Ori, Ori, Gini? That doesn't sound that bad. Oh, in rice balls. <laughs> so instead of saying rice balls, you say nice balls. I mean, hey, who knows? Maybe you, you just want to compliment somebody on their very fantastic set of balls. You know, men always complain that they never get enough compliments, but how often do you go around complimenting your bros on their nice balls, right? Can we normalize that? Men never get enough compliments. We always compliment girls about how nice their hair looks today. Why can we never go around complimenting guys on their nice looking balls? I dream of a future when I can go around and my friends can compliment me on my balls. Where we can appreciate a good looking sack. As uh, Charlie is saying there. I mean, listen, when you got a good sack, you got a good sack. Because you can't exactly go around saying nice pussy either. Why? Why not? When I see a nice looking cat, why can I not go up to a woman and say, hey, you got a nice looking pussy over there? What is wrong with that? If they've got a cute little cat out on display. I want to be able to state my opinions. I see nothing wrong with that. It is a compliment. Uh, but let's see though. Once again, we're going to start out with all the edge pieces. Again, bringing me back down to I, I I feel like it always it always comes back to a story from university, but I feel like most guys maybe it's just like the male sense of humor wouldn't mind a random guy coming up to them and saying, Hey dude, nice dick or like nice balls. Because again, in university, when I was when a friend and I were bored, we went to around asking a bunch of guys that we, like most of our friends, technically speaking as well though, maybe that's also why, most guys in our residence, so like this big house that a bunch of uh, students live in, all men, and uh, we would go around knocking on their doors, barging into their rooms, and we would ask them very directly which way their penis went. Like, did their penis curve to the left or the right? And uh, it is indeed the penis inspection story, never gonna give you up. And the amount of people that 
did not question us were really shocking, to be honest. The amount of people who we, we could go up to them and we could ask them, hey, which way does your penis curve? And they gave legitimate answers. They didn't stop to ask why. They didn't stop to get weirded out. They just straight up said, oh, yeah, yeah, you want to know? Uh, it goes left. Uh, what do you ask? It, it, it is surprising how willing men are. I'll, I'll put it like that. Ah, I realized that technically speaking, this is a horrible image. Uh, well, maybe part horrible image. Because Yoko's cleavage is covered, unfortunately. But, on the upside, we do get two nice tummies. Uh, this is the law of equivalent exchange, I suppose. Ah, oh, so this is what we're building. It is what we're building, Charlie. Yeah, it is sad that we we like we're missing out on one of the best parts of Yoko, which is her cleavage. But the tummy, I suppose, more than makes up for it. I always wondered. Speaking of cleavage. Uh, People that buy those, like, boob mouth mouse pads, are they actually any good? Because I, I know it's technically speaking supposed to be ergonomic, right? Because there are, there are normal mouse pads that have a, a flat bump, which is supposed to raise your wrist. But the thing is, the, um, the, the, the issue is that those mouse pads that are actually ergonomic, they are still, they are flat. They are raised, but flat. So you can still move your, your, like you can slide your wrist along it. The issue with the cleavage ones is that it is a crevice. It is a crack. Depending on the size of the girl, it could, it could literally just be a stranglehold on your wrist to keep it in position. And if I remember that, technically speaking, the ergonomic way to move your mouse is, one, obviously, having your wrist raised is good, but two, you should not be, your wrist shouldn't be locked in place to a point where if you move your mouse left and right, you shouldn't be twisting your hand. You should be sliding your entire arm. That's what I, that's what I heard. So you shouldn't be like, you know, uh, you should be moving your entire arm, your forearm, essentially, not just your, your hand. So I would imagine that the, the cleavage mouse pads would actually be bad for that because it locks your, your wrist in place. So you can't shift it around or like slide it around. Some people say they're okay. And I suppose it, yeah, I guess it depends on the quality of the tits and how soft they are, which is something you can say about both Mouse pads and real woman. And maybe if you distract one. Oh, I remember I had a really, really old. Like one of those mice where it wasn't really a mouse. It was just like a big orb that you, you like that was the mouse. It was just a big round orb that you could spin around and that would be your mouse. And it had like big ass buttons on the side, like like full on space bars as your left click and right click. I missed that thing. Now you're not sure if you could get one? <laughs> oh, because... You know what? No. Don't, don't let the, the booboo mouse pad sales people hear about this. Let them think that it is ergonomic and stuff like that. That's track. Oh, that, so that is a trackball. But are they that big though? I know some, like sometimes you get like the small... Like you get the mice that have a built-in ball on the side and you can use that as well. Or like it's, it's an upright holding... Like, it's like a, a flight joystick with the mouse on the side uh, of the, on the left hand, on the inner side of it. But yeah, if you have, if, like, having one of those big trackballs, like the big ass ones was fun. But I, I always wonder though, like, uh, in my head, those booba mouse pads are more of a merge thing, so you don't actually use it. Like, I have yet to see somebody unironically using the one. I'm sure many people buy them, but I feel like they would use. I feel like they would use it for other things before they use it for the actual intended purpose. I, to be fair, though, I don't know if uh, many people will like this, but I mean, I, I know there are a lot of people actually technically 
where they get merch and they always like, you know, they keep it sealed and everything because they want to keep it in pristine condition. I am kind of the same in that if I know that it's like a one of a kind, it's either one of a kind thing or a rare thing that I will not be able to get very often, I don't like using it. But the worst is, um, like I would get commemorative diaries. And, uh, they're, or, or like notebooks. Notebooks are the worst. Oh my goodness. So you can either, of course, get a standard notebook that has just like, you know, your generic lines and whatnot. But sometimes you get the fancy notebooks, right? Uh, the notebooks that have like fancy lines in them and they have like the fancy cover and stuff like that. Or like, you know, the, the leather diaries and whatnot. They even have the little strap on uh, that, that allows you to like keep a bookmark and stuff like that built into it. And or like the daily planners and whatnot. I hated getting those as gifts because... Yes, they were cool and all, but for some reason, I, I couldn't bring myself to write in them because I couldn't bring myself to taint it. I, I would rather just use a random piece of blank paper to write stuff down in, as opposed to these fancy notebook planners and whatnot. Because I, I was always scared, like, I don't, I don't want to tarnish it with my ugly ass handwriting and stuff like that. Maybe this is me being weird, though. Like, I have a bunch of diaries from, uh, like, high school and stuff like that that are very, very nice, like, hardcover diaries and all that stuff. But I would never write in them. Because, again, why... I would just write it down on a piece of paper instead. It is just me being weird. Ah, in that case, I, I, I'll take it. I'll take being, being weird there, then. Like, I have so many diaries that are just empty. Because at least I know with a, a gen generic exam, but I can buy more. So I don't have to ever worry about not being able to get more of this. Maybe maybe it's like a hoarder mentality in a sense, I think. But I know, obviously, people think of that when, uh, mainly when it comes to stuff like collectibles and stuff like that. I know for sure that is a definite thing. You kind of get it, but you're set boulder. Ah, I see, I see, I see. When it comes, uh, when you say set boulder, uh, what's are we talking about like Lego sets and stuff like that? I assume. Crazy shadow. Is that uh, my roommate actually? He uh, last year he built a lot of Lego stuff, and I was actually I was surprised at how crazy Lego sets can be. Ah, 30 minute missions. Ah, I see, I see, I see. But yeah, if you guys don't know about Lego sets, they are... There are some crazy ones. Like, they are actually like full mechanic... Like, mechanical contraptions and stuff like that that you can build. Like, they are train sets and everything even. Like, there are literal motors and stuff like that that you can get in Lego sets nowadays, apparently. Barnacles was it, yeah. In fact, I think uh, my the the first time I saw the motors um, was I feel like it's a video that everybody has seen now because it always gets recommended. But it's a video of a guy like pushing those the metal bars and stuff like that in the Lego sets to the limit, where he applies like a five thousand to one gear ratio on a motor, and it just absolutely obliterates a metal bar or like a metal like cross rod uh, under the sheer force of the motor. The motors have been around for a while. Ah! I guess maybe it was just me as a child only having the generic basic ass bricks to use uh, as a kid growing up. I mean, yeah, you, you could buy a set and just pre build this fancy contraption. Or you could be like me as a child and build an ugly ass square house where the walls are all multiple different colors because you don't have enough of the same color instead. And the bricks are all different shapes and sizes as well. And it's not consistent in any way whatsoever. That was what real Lego is about.
you cannot find the light report of Yoko's hair. And it's Kimmy? Uh, oh, I, I'm guessing you're talking about like this final part here at the edge of her hair. Oh, it's, uh, is it not this? Oh, no. Oh, you got it finally. That, that is the frustration. Who knew that uh, this, some would argue, is the Dark Souls of puzzles, of puzzle building. Maybe that's maybe that's the plan, the strategy, Kokoro. Just complain about it, and uh, it will appear for you. Let it voice voice your opinions, and it'll know that it the piece is wanted, and it shall appear before you. You can in fact summon the pull the pull, the piece, on command. Every puzzle is a dark souls of puzzle. Yeah, exactly. Every puzzle is the Dark Souls of puzzles until you actually complete it. The, back the background does look a bit tough. That's one of the issues with a lot of the, the pieces or the puzzle images that I was looking at was that it was all like Yoko in like the front and center and then it was just a generic, like a blank solid white background or something like that. Because obviously all the effort went into drawing uh, her cleavage essentially. <laughs> And she has a black. Yeah, she does have black and blue coat. I, I kind of like the the red the red versus blue type of aesthetic going on over there. You cannot find Lyrico's hair clip. I mean, where is it? Wait, did you just get it now though? Maybe it's actually working. In theory, though, I know uh, because of course all of these puzzles are generated by just sending an image. What you could in theory do is maybe one day we can make our own puzzle. I just, I don't know, like randomly take a screenshot of something and you can make a puzzle of that. I still remember my initial plan for this puzzle idea was to do puzzles of uh, other VTubers. But uh, finding, like, usable art of just random VTubers out there, surprisingly difficult. So maybe one day what we could do is we could just go finding up random streams and just take a screenshot of their stream and build a puzzle of that. <laughs> like, imagine what, what we do is we just take a screenshot of this entire board right now, even the missing pieces and everything as it is, and we make a puzzle out of that. Imagine that. A puzzle of a puzzle. How deep can we go? How meta can we get with it? Uh. Kokoro is very pumped about that idea. I don't even know what I want to contribute to. Actually, now that I, now that I just said that out loud, uh, I, I, yesterday I was talking about how there are different pronunciations, right? Where Americans would say "smash" or "pass," but uh, myself, as well as I think most British or Europeans, would say "smash" or "pass." Well, the other one of the other like weird phrasing or pronunciation differences that I know of that always that always confuses me is stuff like. I, I just forgot the word. Uh, I just forgot the word. I just forgot the word. Uh, contribute, contribute. No, no, no. It's it's contribute. There's co um, like there's two ways to say it. I've heard people say, like, oh, I'm going to contribute to the uh, to the cause or. Like there's a, the, some people say it with a pause. I don't know if I can, uh, if I, can just, I, I, I can't think of it now. It's contribute versus contribute. I think, yeah, that's, that's, some people just say it like in one easy go, like contribute versus contribute. Yeah, exactly. That's it, that's it, Charlie. Contribute versus contribute. I still don't know which is the correct way. Whenever I do say it out loud, I, I always second guess myself. Uh, 
because uh, I, I know there is technically speaking I um another like toss up is present but like there's different ways to pronounce it but those are because the different there are actual different words there's present like I am here I am present or I give you a present or present I am presenting something in front of an audience and stuff like that uh, yo what is this song you always hear it it is a I can quickly check for you Kokoro It is a Pokemon... Uh, it's the Pokemon League song from Diamond and Pearl. The night version. That is the song. I know a lot of people use... Uh, I I'm assuming you, you always hear it because... Uh, maybe it's a song that people use in like... YouTube videos. I know Nintendo music often gets used a lot... In uh, YouTube videos. Obviously everybody, everybody knows about... The Wii theme... Or the, like the Wii Sports Shop theme being used and stuff like that. Or Mario songs being used. Uh, but Pokemon songs as well, also, get used quite often. Okay, also, you're about to hear a sound. I will give fair warning. This is not your computer, this is my computer. I don't know if you heard it, but uh, it was just the sound of like a device being plugged in. But don't worry, that, that was my phone though. I feel like I had to give a warning because a lot of people... It's like the, the, the Discord ping, right? You hear a Discord ping in a video and you never know. Wait, is, it, is that me or is that is that uh, the video? You seen a bunch of people use Nintendo teams for background music? Which probably, I know, because there's a whole big thing about uh, DMCA, right? But uh, I'm also not really too sure. Because again, recently, for those of you who don't know, there is a channel called... Uh, Silver Gunner, who had thousands upon thousands of his videos get taken down because of him uploading game audio, like just straight up soundtracks from Nintendo games. And uh, I feel like if you, you can literally just go on YouTube and you can find the uh, like Nintendo music and I'm pretty sure one of the top results is like Nintendo royalty free music. Stuff like that. And perfectly synced with music. Yeah, if I feel like if I had not mentioned it, I could have gotten away with it. Never gonna give you up. If I had just not mentioned anything. And yeah, it's like I said. Normally we start off with the edges and then like the face, like the important parts. You start off with the edges, the faces, and like the erotic zones, the tummies, the thighs, and whatnot. I'm a bit concerned that we suddenly went straight to building the gun of all things here. How- uh, do we have a, like, a large proportion of Americans in the- the chat all of a sudden, or something? Why- why is the gun suddenly the first thing that gets completed? I guess we just need to balance things out. Are you saying Yoko's gun isn't a rock? Okay, you, you- you're not wrong, actually. Kokoro, you're not- you're wrong. <laughs> you gotta keep the dick in the place- oh, yeah. This is, uh, this is your, my gun, this is my rifle. One is for shooting, one is for fun. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I suppose, yeah, I suppose the gun is the most distinct color out of everything here, the, the silver of it. And you're pulling the oh yes, I'm glad, Kokoro, I'm glad. I can see you pulling out of there. Oh. We have our priorities straight there now. Yeah, I suppose it is being pointed directly at us, so it's almost like a threat. You better build the gun or else. Blam, 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 get shot in the face. Speaking of guns, by the way, and blam, blam, blamming. For those of you who don't know, by the way, because everybody now has their animated emotes, I now actually have the, uh, the gun emote as an animated emote. When you sub to the channel. So now you can use, uh, the Shadow Bang emote. To shoot up some people. If you so choose to use the sub emotes. Unfortunately, you cannot use the uh, channel points to redeem animated emotes. Which is kind of sad. Oh, that's what they're- Oh, are you talking about the hand about around uh, Yoko's stomach? <laughs> I wish that was my hand. Oh my goodness. Uh... 
let's see. Oh. Hopefully everybody knows this song. I know it's the one pointing oh <laughs> the one pointing directly at us. Yeah, I suppose it is kinda hard to notice. When it's like directly at you. What is Charlie Chaplin? Yeah, so it's uh, the Charlie Chaplin theme song, actually. <laughs> Speaking of... <laughs> okay. I, I, I just... I, I always think back to university because that's always the, the craziest stories. But speaking of the hand being pointing straight at us and, like, you know, not realizing it. We had... I, I remember... Of course, I would never do this because I'm not that type of person. But we, my friends and I would always talk about jokingly sending dick pics to people, right? Like uh, other dudes. And um, we would always theorize, what is the weirdest possible dick pic you could send to somebody? And we always came to the conclusion that the weirdest possible one is to send a front-facing dick pic. So, you know, like you don't see it, send it from the top or from the side. So you just see like, like the eye staring back at you of a penis. You don't see like the length or anything, you just see the tip staring directly at the camera. We always, we always settled on that being the ultimate picture to send. Of course, nobody would, none of us would ever actually do it though, because that would just be weird. But, uh, that is for sure though, the best one. Because, like, think about it. There's the mystery. You don't want to give away the entire secret, you know, right? You don't want to give away whether you're, like, a, a grower or a shower or how lengthy you are, but you give just enough to say, hey, I'm sending you a dick pic, but I'm not. Uh, you can't use it to complain about me being small or big or whatnot. It's more of a nutshell at that point. Oh my goodness, now that I think about. Wow, Charlie, where were you with my, uh, with me and my university friends? Now that I think about it, even worse than just sending a uh, staring back into the camera picture, what if you sent a nutshot from the point of view to a person as a, as a dick pic? <laughs> Oh, that's a new form of sexual assault. I mean, you've heard of stories about people uh, making tributes and like, you know, shooting their load over figurines and sending that, but what if you just... Like, P POV. <laughs> a POV nutshot to somebody. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, like, like, like Charlie says, there are videos of POV. But whenever you think of POV videos, you always think of POV from the men. I wonder if there are how many, like, female POV videos are out there. And if there are an audience for that. Maybe, who knows, this could be an untapped market. This could be... A, uh... A marker. Game indefinitely. Oh, that's true, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I one of the, my one of the best things I always do is at the end of the year, I always look up the uh because it's just interesting. I look up the Pornhub statistics of like the most searched for terms and stuff like that. Actually, I'm, I'm gonna do that right now. I'll put it up on the side. So after we're done with this, we can have a, a deep dive. God, I'm killing you. I'm sorry, Red White Man. I mean, listen, you kn you know, you knew what you were getting yourself into when you opened the stream. To be fair, probably there are far more. Uh, probably there are for the straight one too. I suppose so. Like it's a very niche market. Uh, yeah, it's very dangerous. I'm opening Pornhub.com. Okay. I've got- what? Hang on, let me just get, have a quick scan through this webpage and make sure everything is safe to show for later on. Okay, it is. Uh, I know what we're gonna look at after this puzzle. In that case, let's hurry up and finish this so we can have a look at some statistics. And learn more about ourselves as a human race. And uh, learn and become disappointed in ourselves as a human race, to be more specific. Because boy oh boy.
I had a look at some of the headlines and... Oof. Actually, oh wait, I think I know why. Uh, speaking of, you know, porn and anime. Has everybody heard about the story? I think it's quite old now, but about the, the Italy thing. Like, there was a big Italian conference and somehow, somewhere, Final Fantasy XIV porn was leaked on the uh, <laughs> live in the meeting or something like that. Uh, I, I was very curious why all of a sudden there was like a bunch of Italian Tifa porn. Well, no, no, not even porn. Just Italian Tifa drawings being released suddenly. And then I, I got to the bottom of it and I went, ah, I see. And it was indeed Tifa, Charlie. Hence why there were there was a sudden surge of Tifa fan art. Like Tifa wearing an Italian flag or Tifa wearing a Mario outfit and stuff like that. I will say though. Uh, actually, no, I won't, I won't say anything. <laughs> I'd rather keep my mouth shut before I say something bad. But you know, I'll say it anyway. Uh, it should have been Aerith. But anyway. I think apparently also there was... Uh, that wasn't the only one, I think. There, like, in the in the frustration... They alt-tabbed and they showed something else instead. I think it was a Genshin character. But obviously because Tifa was the one that appeared first, that was the one that everybody was talking about. Better than Tifa, you you get <laughs> You were close, Charlie. You were close. And Cocker, a true a true champion among among us. Oh no. I said I said the phrase. A true champion amidst us. Finishing Yoko's boobs. The important bits. Uh ooh, do I get to oh no. Yeah, I I, I, I hate now that, out of reaction, whenever I say the words among us or suspicious, I get scared because I instinctively react and go, oh no, somebody's gonna go, oh, sussy, sussy baka, ooh, and stuff like that. And there we go, Gondola taking his sweet time, finally getting us the, the finished puzzle there. But congratulations, everybody. And there we have it. Alright, the, where, where were we? We were talking about porn. <laughs> so, uh, let's open up this website here. Uh, this. Now, this is going to look very scary because this is going to be Pornhub, but it's Pornhub Insights. For those of you who don't know, this is the... Um, the, the, the yearly statistics review from Pornhub. Make the stats page the next puzzle. Like the, the global map. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah, they want to talk like- Yeah, exactly. Charlie, if they want to talk like a 10 year old, then I will just ignore them. They, if they call out Sassy Barker, I will treat them the way a Sassy Barker should be treated. Alright, let's see. Uh, okay, here's the first one. Should I crop the right side there? I don't like the fact that- I don't think- mm, I should crop the right side there. <laughs> Get rid of that right hand side there. And, uh, uh, let's just do it like that. This is fine. This is fine. So, let's get interested in these stats. I see never gonna give up. Is very excited. So, the searches that define 2021. The the searches uh, that define 2021. What is the first one gonna be? What do you all think is the top number one? Search for 2021. I don't know if any of you saw. Uh, got a glimpse of it. But the number one is actually... <laughs> it is not Tifa. I think Tifa showed up a bit too late. Also, actually, before that... Hang on. Uh, I need to I need unhide this. Do you all see that on the right-hand side there? On the right-hand side, there's a, one of the, like, the articles that are available are in Among Us searches. Why was there such a big spike here? What happened here? What? What? Why? What happened here? 
I... I mean, I know Among Us was popular, but come on, guys. Come on. Uh, also, let me... Oh, the, the music ended. Let me play up another one. Let's go with uh, this one. I think this should be fine. Right. More Pokemon music. But yeah. Uh, I'm just gonna ignore that. The Among Us. And, uh, whoop, hang on. Let me not show the BDSM stuff on the right-hand side there. But the number one search, it was not nurse. It was not lesbian. And uh, it was not no clue. Or no idea. <laughs> it was hentai. Hentai became the number one search on Pornhub. Su surpassing both Japanese worldwide and lesbian in the US. You were close, never gonna give you up. You were surprisingly close. Uh, Alright, next up. Number two was romance. Oh, that's kind of nice. Romantic, some passionate. Whoa, 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 hang on. The popularity of romance and romantic searches more than doubled, along with a 139% increase in passionate searches. Bromance grew 288% among Pornhub's gay male visitors. Woo! Let's go. Gay men out there. Woo! See, th it all comes full circle. We were talking about people uh, compliment this is where people would compliment each other on having nice balls. In the bromance section, there is- that's where it is! That's where the nice balls comments would go. In the bromance section. Uh, number three, group sex. Uh, threesome grew by 40% worldwide and became the seventh most popular search. People were probably getting lonely during lockdown. Oh, that's true. Oh, and you're right, Kokoro. Hentai becoming number one is most likely Related to Hentai Haven dying. Uh, not- I, I- I mean, sorry, I mean, Hentai Haven, what's that? <laughs> uh, was that this year? Or was that 2021? I think it was 2021. Uh, let's see, next up, fitness. Okay, you know what? I'm glad. In the year of 2021, when it was all locked down, right? Everybody's stuck inside. I'm glad that everybody has their priority, right? And they're still trying to keep fit. Hey, you know what? Claps to everybody in the world there. They know to stay fit. Searches for fitness grew by 65% following a similar trend in 2020. Porn involving activities like yoga, running, exercise, and gym. You know what? I'm glad. Everybody was just trying to stay fit during the pandemic. I'm glad that people were trying to find uh, yoga exercises and fitness routines during this time of trouble. Why is Pornhub's brand new point? I mean, listen. Say what you will, but you can probably find whatever you want on Pornhub, if you think about it. Uh, next up, swapping. What? Oh, swapping. Searches for swap- oh, swingers. Searches for swap and swapping grew by 170%. Swinger and swinging trended in the summer, resulting in 127 increase in popularity. Cuckold grew by 168% and cheating by 93%. What is wrong with this world? Uh, they have their finger on the- yeah, that's true. Challenge? What? A challenge? Challenge related searches grew by 200. What? Are we speaking like Cinnamon Challenge over here? Uh, wait a minute. What is this challenge? Challenge related searches grew by 255% with trending terms like Busset. What is a Busset? I do not want to know what a Busset is. I regret learning about this. I. Am I going to Google what a Busset is? All right, hang on. I'm opening up a, a separate tab. I'm Googling. Don't worry. And oh, uh, yeah. Like, I I was also confused when it said swap, but after hearing the word cuck, then it made sense. Uh, all right. Bus. It. Bus it. Wait, what? Bus it is an official music video by Erica Banks. Why is this? What? Why is this a challenge? Bus It Challenge Compilation. Oh, I think it's, you know what it is? I think it was a, it's a song. And so because of that, there is a TikTok dance challenge where I'm guessing the dance is something else. And uh, it's probably just people looking up compilations of women doing it on TikTok. Bus It sounds like a British Pokemon. That's my favorite Pokemon. Bus It sounds like it would have been in our smash list from yesterday when we were ranking, or sorry, 
debating whether or not we would smash or pass on the different Pokemon. Busted would definitely get a smash. What's up, Pornhub? Today we're going to be doing the, the one girl, ten guys challenge. <laughs> That's true. You know, people... Where, where is Mr. Beast on this? Where is Mr. Beast on the, the challenge videos here? Last one to come wins... Last one to come wins a million dollars. I mean, I mean, literally, it's a try not to come challenge. Mr. Beast, come on! Where is your... Where is your Pornhub account, Mr. Beast? There is money to be made here. There is views to be had. Uh... If Mr. Beast doesn't do it, then I will. If only I had the million dollars. Alright, next up, number seven, transgender. Searching containing uh, trans increased by 141%, and views of the transgender category grew by 23%, making it the 10th most watched by male vis by male visitors. Why did it Why specify by male visitors? That's interesting. Huh. Uh, goth. Ooh, the goth resurgence. Goth searches containing goth grew by 283% in 2021, averaging more than 5 million searches each month. That is a uh, quite a big uptick. Possibly it wasn't the 10th. Oh, that's true. Oh, I see, I see, I see. They uh, specifically single out as the male visitors. As uh, it peaking only for male visitors and nothing else. Ah, that's true. It's a good point, Charlie. You are a lot better at analyzing data than I am. And yeah, I suppose it is just make it look cool. Uh, roommate. Searches containing roommate grew by 136, including lesbian roommate, gay roommate, fucking roommate, straight roommate, and horny roommate. Uh, number 10, how to? <laughs> I mean, listen. People always, people always complain about YouTube going on YouTube and you know, you never know if a tutorial is going to be useful or not. And you know what? Actually, actually, hang on. Wait a minute. If I'm not mistaken, one of the big arguments. And uh, yeah, you're right, Charlie. It, it wouldn't make it very fun to say. And yeah, transgender was the 51st most watched uh, tag by this uh, subsection of viewers. Speaking about how to. I remember when YouTube announced that they were going to introduce or remove the dislike button. Everybody was up in arms, right? Why? Because everybody was saying, think about the tutorial videos. Now, when you watch a tutorial video, you won't know if it's good or not. Because now you can't tell if uh, it's useful. Because normally, if it was a bad video, you would see a bunch of downvotes. But now, with YouTube, it is going to be very difficult to find a good how-to video. Because the dislikes will be hidden. Now, however, on Pornhub, the dislikes, I think, are shown. So that means that you could, in theory, argue that Pornhub is going to be a better place to find trusted tutorials to find out with, uh, whether or not something is useful or not. And you've got the plugin. Ah, yeah, I know a lot of people are talking about there's like some plugin that allows you to find the dislikes by getting the YouTube API, but apparently that will not last for long because the way the plugin works is it uses already available information. Because I think, technically speaking, some people can still see dislikes depending on like, you know, region or whatever and stuff like that. But eventually they are going to make it almost impossible where uh, you are not going to be able to view it whatsoever. But for now though, I mean, people can still see dislikes if you go out of your way to get a plugin. That's crazy, Shadow says. Uh, oh, Hazmat, I'm sorry, you, you've joined at a, an interesting time. Unfortunately, we have finished building three jigsaw puzzles. The, the OG Tokyo Mew Mew, the new Tokyo Mew Mew, aka Tokyo Mew Mew New, and uh, also Yoko Littner from Gurren Lagan. But we are now, unfortunately, uh, at a different stage of the stream where we are going through the Pornhub Insights from 2021. So all DIY repair channels should move to Pornhub. Exactly never gonna give you up. That's what I'm saying. Because now, if you put your DIY videos on Pornhub, where you will be able to see likes and dislikes, that will give you a better chance to know whether or not a DIY video is good. Because now, if you go on Pornhub and you see, oh, it has 100% likes, then you know it must be a good tutorial. Whereas on YouTube, there is a chance that you don't know that because dislikes will become hidden. I mean, how else am I going to learn how to make her come? <laughs> uh, I suppose this is just a breakdown of the top 10, stuff like that. 
2021's most searched for terms. Wait, what was... Oh, so this is top 10 categories, I think. So what is the upcoming one now? And also, welcome, by the way, Hazmat. I'm going to say hello. Um, 2021's most searched for terms. Is this not the same thing? Oh, this, this is just a breakdown. Ooh! Hentai only just barely beat out Japanese. So wait, Japanese was number one last year. Because I'm seeing uh, the difference here. The plus minus. So hentai just beat out Japanese. Lesbian was in a close for third. MILF was fourth. Pene jumped up to fifth place. Gaining 13 positions. What is Pene? Again, this is going to be a dangerous search. Uh, let me open up a different tab. Pene. Oh, it's uh, oh, somebody from Filipino. Oh, a woman of Filipino origin or descent. Uh, Asian. Well, people really like their, their Eastern Asian girls. Japanese, Panay, Asian. And then we have stepmom, anal, ebony, big ass, massage, anime. Uh, let's see. But, oh, so now for the most searched porn stars. Bunch of people I don't know of. Oh, who's Lana Rhodes? I don't know her. Who's Isabella Danger? I don't know her. Who's Eva Alfie? I don't know her. I don't know any of these people. Uh, where's the funny stuff, though? Most viewed amateur models. Oh, wait, hang on. Isn't... Uh, what was the name? What was the name of... Um, Belle Delphine? Didn't she start a porn up account? Not that I would know of. Isn't she... Is she not on here somewhere? Or has she fallen off of relevancy? Last I heard about her, she was, she was like selling her bath water, but then... I think that was about it. Uh, but let's see then. The State of the Union. Alright, most searched for terms of 2020. This is just United States, that's whatever. Who cares about America? Uh, ooh, however, this is interesting. 2021, United States top relative searches. Uh, let's see, there's double penetration, JOI, Asian, twerking, giantess, anal cream pie, hardcore, Mormon, huge boobs, deep throat, amateur wife. That girl, wait, what? Crazy shadow. Are we talking about the same person? Belle Delphine. She sold uranium. What? Interesting. I'm gonna have a look. Uh, find that out. Also, I can't help but notice. United States, I don't know what what continent or country or sorry, state this is, but penis pump? Really? Uh Top 20 countries by traffic. Oh, okay, here we go. Top 20 countries by traffic. Let's see where we all rank. United States. Wow. United States. Calm down, you guys. You guys have to calm down. United States. You are more than like almost everybody else combined here. So United States, number one. USA. USA. Is, is this an appropriate time to start a USA chant? USA. USA. Uh, next up, United Kingdom, number two. Japan, number three. France, number four. Italy, number five. Mexico, sixth. Canada, seventh. Germany, eighth. Philippines, uh, ninth. Brazil, and tenth. Uh, I'm kind of sad, actually. Because, if I'm not mistaken, in a previous year, either 2019 or 2020, I'm pretty sure South Africa was somewhere in here. We've fallen from grace. Oh, no. Ooh, okay, but more importantly though, this is this is an important one. Time per visit. This, this tells a lot about a person. How long they spent on the website. Because you know, the longer you spend... Okay, well, there's two reasons. Either you spend a long time on the site because you're having difficulty finding the perfect video, or you got some stamina. So, let's have a look and see. Uh, Philippines. Uh, okay, well, firstly, the average visit worldwide is 9 minutes and 55 seconds. Females, on average, stay for 14 seconds longer. Uh, oh, I want, I want to see... Man, I'm, they're all showing the longest lasters here. But again, this could just be inflated because maybe they're taking really long to find it. Or maybe possibly as well. To, is the Philippines known for having, like, good internet? What if they just take really long to visit because they, they're just stuck buffering really, really long? That, that could also be a reason why they take so long on the website. I want to see the shortest time per visit. That'd be the funny one. 
Now it's just states. Favorite time to watch porn? Ooh. I mean, this is expected, right? M late at night, that's... Oh, I mean, hang on, wait a minute. <laughs> we're, we're, we're reaching the peak time. If you, look at, if you look at this, the favorite time to watch porn is at 11 p.m. And if we look right now, I have a clock on screen that shows my local time. Hmm, it's, it is just so happens to be 11 p.m. You know what that means. Uh, I'm gonna hit... You know what? I'll be, I'll be right back, guys. I have something, I have something to attend to. <laughs> uh, okay, well, I feel like now I have to, I have to keep on streaming for at least a couple more hours, because now, if I, if I suddenly end during peak activity time, it'll be a little bit suspicious as to why I suddenly, uh, went offline. Uh, categorical analysis. That was suspiciously quick. I mean, we we can't all be, we can't all be like the Philippines. That uh can last for a full eleven minutes and thirty one seconds. All right, categorical analysis. Most viewed categories of twenty twenty one. Again, Japanese. People really love their Japanese. I mean, makes sense, all right. Uh, all right, the world's most viewed categories. Here's the interesting one. So, uh, all over Africa, a lot of ebony. America, ebony. Canada, lesbian. Uh, Russia. Russia is into their waifus. My goodness. Putin. Putin has... Putin is out there for some anime. Uh, top gaining categories. Big ass. 314%. Bisexual male. 280%. And, uh, yeah, the, the Russians know where it's at. Uh... You know, I would I would be very scared to be Japanese over here because <laughs> everyone around you wants to watch porn of you. If you if you are in oh yeah, you can't see my mouse. If you are in this area or no sorry, if you are in Japan, how does it feel to know every single every single one around you wants to try and have sex with you? <laughs> Imagine that. I must be very scared for the Japanese. Nowhere is safe. I suppose the same thing could be said about. Here in Africa. Uh, let's see. And yeah, Putin is saying hello, where wife? Well, actually, it wasn't. It was Russian, right? Where there was some female. I don't know. She wasn't like a minister or something. Um, she was at some conference, and uh, she became a, a, a meme because of you know everyone was like, oh, she looks so pretty, and then they like they drew her as an anime character and stuff like that. Um, I think she was Russian. She was the other. I think she was either Russian or <laughs> Ukrainian, which is a whole nother story. And uh, high demand, low supply. Ah, uh, that's true. It is all about supply and demand. It always comes back to it. But uh, what was her name? I think she was Russian, right? Uh, I don't know if she was happy about it. I remember, I remember there was like videos and stuff like that where people would go up to her and they would like show her the anime merch of her and she... I think she she smiled for the camera, but on the inside she was like dying on the inside. Uh, uh Russian girl anime. What is, what was her name? I think she was Russian, right? Yes, it was Nat Natalia. Pok oh my goodness, Natalia Poklonskaya. I think her name. I think she was Russian, right? Uh, she was an ex-deputy. Uh, oh, she was Crimean. The Crimean Attorney General. Oh, no, sorry, wait. Crimea is in Russia. Is it? Wait, what? She's a Russian politician. So, yes. So, that makes sense, then. <laughs> that makes sense. I wonder how much of this hentai was of her. But I think the my goodness, there's actually so much more. I just looked at the, the, the scroll bar now. There is a lot more to go through. And uh, despite what I said earlier about not wanting to stop now, it is quite late and I'm also noticing OBS is starting to shit the bed, I think. So I think this is where we are going to call it today.
So let me move over here. Get porn up off of the screen. And uh, I will say this will be it for today. And we have some nice calm music in the background as well. Uh, hopefully it's not buffering too much because I can I can see OBS is having a hard time here. Uh, thank you though, everybody, for coming out to today's stream and indulging in the nonsense talks. It's always fun bantering with everybody while building some puzzles. But uh, until next time, next time, of course, being Friday, where we will be playing more Master Duel. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining out to the, today's stream. And thank you once again, if you came from Obdini or Gondola Gaming's raids, thanks for stopping by. Uh, if you haven't already, consider following on Twitch and or Twitter. And also subscribing to YouTube as well. Yeah. If you haven't already. But for now, though, let's have a look and see who we can raid. I can, I can see OBS is struggling. OBS is giving me a red block saying, listen, you better end now or else I will end it for you. Uh, so let's have a look and see who all is online to raid. But no, thank you all for coming out today. And let's see. We can raid... All's online. Ah, I know. Someone who's actually recently... Uh, has it been recent? But someone who's recently started is uh, Pygmy, who's going through the uh, the Steam... I think there's a Steam Fest with like a bunch of cheap games and stuff like that. So maybe, who knows, if you're also on the hunt for some new Steam games, maybe Pygmy can show you guys something new to get. Uh, so let's go ahead and raid Pygmy. And again, thank you all for joining me today. Until next time, hope you all have a great rest of your day. I shall see you all next time. And again, despite it being like the peak time, I promise I'm not going to go joke off. I promise. And uh, the raid message, of course, will be and, uh, hello. And if you have an emote, you want to redeem one now, of course, you can throw in the Shanna wave as well if you would like to. But until next time, thank you all for joining me today, and I will see you next time. And oh, I'm ending. Yes, I am ending, unfortunately, Kokoro. But again, the next stream will be on Friday. <laughs> you can always look forward to that, though. And I, I will try to start doing this more uh, more often. The whole point was I would always do Waifu Wednesdays. And you know what? I think I'm going to try and normalize it again. And every Wednesday will be Jigsaw Waifu Wednesday. So look forward to, hopefully, another one next week. And uh, maybe then we'll start another lies. I mean, it is possible that I'm lying. <laughs> it is entirely possible. But who knows? I could be telling the truth. In that case, all you have to do is just tune in next time and who knows? Maybe we will be doing more puzzles. I'm checking right now. Hmm. Don't reveal my secrets, Cocker. Oh, go. Go watch Pick Me before you all hear. Oh no, wait. Are you hearing that? Oh no, wait. Hang on. Did I forget to click raid now? Oh my goodness. Oh no.